because this move b6 looks like a pawn you wish you could move back, right? And again, we've talked about chess.com bugs, but this is one we still have not fixed. Oh, and we, we have back. called him uh, Woman Freedom Master, but now it has been corrected. He's a Grandmaster, part of the Olympic team of the Netherlands, Benjamin Bock, currently studying at the St. Louis University, and he may be in trouble, which is big news for Armenia. Yeah, he looks good in that jersey, though. With me now, International Master Anna Ruda, who has been around the crowd. What's the energy been like outside of the booth here? That Was that not one of the most exciting matches of any kind ever? I know. I, it was so nerve-wracking. I didn't know what was going to happen in this last match. And if it was the pandas, was it the snowballs that would make it through? Uh, nerve-wracking games. In the end, Meyer pulled it off. And yeah, I think the, the look on his face when yep. he finished his game. You can tell how bad they wanted game. it. I know. That was I know. awesome. Was a very, I, very good moment. In terms of the audience, I just want to give a quick shout out to everybody who came to see us here live on site at the Folsom Foundry. The energy downstairs is amazing. That's, that's to you guys and for all the love that we get, all the streamers. I think we so appreciate those of you who watch us on Twitch and you come to see us in person. I'm so happy to meet fans and they introduce themselves to us and they say, oh, this is me from Twitch and that's, I saw you the other day and I saw your chest bar impression and it was great. Thank you so much. And Eric is also here. Eric, The real Eric is also here, but I think I'm a better Eric. I think so too, actually. Thank I'm going to tell Eric that. You are a better <laughs> Eric than Eric, that's for sure. Thank you. But uh, the chat's showing you the love there. For those of you who may just be getting here, of course, we were talking about the fact that the snowballs in tie-break overtime fashion got by the Shangju Pandas to play for the championship on Sunday afternoon. But now it's time to talk about what you and I will be about uh, to see for the next several hours. Maybe we'll have overtime again, but it starts with uh, a simple preview. Let's, let's talk about who we're going to see playing for the St. Louis Archbishops here now. Obviously... And it starts with Fabiana Caruana, who not just one of the best players in the world, one of the best players in the Pro Chess League all season long. And look how many games he played. If people are thinking, hey, the top players in the world, not really taking the PCL that seriously, not really enjoying it, I don't think you play 57 games unless you really have a lot of fun playing for your team. I know he's really dedicated to the Archbishops and to the Pro Chess League. People say that, yeah, he's the world number two, but in classical chess, well, Fabi says, no, I am world number two in everything, or maybe the best player in the world. So he wants to prove that in rapid chess yep. too, he's there and no one can take that title from and him. And he'll have an opportunity to do it. I, I think that for the St. Louis Archbishops, frankly, to, to get to the championship, they need, they need their, their leader on board one to perform well. Um, and there you see, as, we, as you said, his PCL record, 52 out of 47, coming in with a 2,800 plus rating that is a a very rare breed of chess player but let's go to board two because we also have a very strong player who though anna he has not um, had nearly as much play in the lineup for manager mike Cummer. Uh, that's because normally they have wesley so right so it's kind of normal to to give give away to wesley so to play on board two but don't don't be surprised by the pick here i think if if this match does go to tie breaks one of the things the st louis archbishops wanted to be prepared for i know from talking to mike was to be better in blitz than they were last year. And so I think that this is a pick that may have a say before things are all done. I agree with you. And as Mike said at the interviews yesterday at the media day, that they really chose their players in terms of their rapid and blitz skills. Yep. And apparently they also chose them based on having uh, titles they shouldn't have because Nicholas Theodoro is one of the highest rated international masters on the planet. We checked some stats. I think he's actually currently number four or number five in terms of those with an IM title that should be a GM. So... Look for him to do well. And then finally, we have the board four for the Archbishops, Julian Perleko, who hasn't played at all. Um, that, that's a real wild card, Anna. What do you think that does for the Archbishops' chances to be throwing somebody who doesn't have any experience yet on the biggest stage in, in chess esports right here at the Pro Chess League Finals? How, how do you think this kid's got to be feeling right now? I think that's a lot of pressure on Julian. Yep. I wouldn't like to be in his shoes, but I'm sure that he's here for a reason. So we will see what that reason is. He hasn't played a single game in the Pro Chess League, and now he's on the same team as Fabiano Caruana. Right. He said that's a little intimidating right, to be did. in the same team as Fabi, but right. we'll see how Julian can deal with this. Well, I think that that'll be a storyline we watch for because moving to the other side, of course, the board four for the Eagles is anything but inexperienced. Anna Sargisian has played 34 games, so we're moving the other way now. Sean and Hike have respectively each played 42, so a very well-balanced lineup there in the middle of the pack. And then, of course, you have the hero from last year's event, Zavin Andriasian, as the top player with 52 games played. He's one of the best blitz and rapid players on Chess.com, regularly over 2,900, and he's going to start things off. 
Yes, it's going to be Zavin chess mood. That's a nice Zavin handle. Chess mood. That's it's right. always a, chess mood. A for lot Zavin. of chess mood. I feel like Armenians are always in the chess mood. Always. Uh, moving on to uh, their second player, Haik Matiriasan, also a rising star in Armenia, um, with a with a very good score, twenty six and a half out of forty two on average, and uh, also regularly sporting a north of twenty nine hundred in blitz on chess dot com. And he's the current Armenian champion. That's right. He's the current Armenian champion now. Shant Sargisian. He was featured earlier in one of our daily questions, as you, you, or you talk about underrated performance performances, right? Mm -hmm. uh, this guy has been board three, but as good as most of the grandmasters in the league. Um, look for him to be a key part as to how the Eagles go today. How high they fly may be, may be dependent on him right there. And then we have Anna, Anna Sargisian, who... Um, not the sister of Shant. We've not been the sister corrected. of Shant. We, we've been corrected many brothers. times, and or and I'm sure we will get those questions again in the chat. But no, it is it is just a common name in Armenia. That's all. Um, and I think Anna is. I'm just going to be totally frank. I'm talking to you, Anna, about Anna. <laughs> I think she's a heavy favorite against the board for Julian Proleko. So I really believe that the bishops, in order to move on to the championship and upset the reigning the reigning champions, they need performances from their top boards today for sure. So Indeed. Anna Sargisian has performed extremely well on board four. She has collected more points than any other board four competing here at the PCL. Yeah. Well, um, we, are, we are getting set to get this thing underway. Um, here are the pairings for round one. As you know, every Pro Chess League match starts with board four on board one action, uh, respectively for both teams. It's where you can get sometimes an, an early sense of what's going to happen, right? It always feels like a little bit anticlimactic because you're like, oh, it, it's early on. All right, it was a good result. But really, w in hindsight, whenever we look back at a match, right, you mm -hmm. can kind of tell early on who was pulling those mini draw upsets and really set their team in the right direction. Indeed. I'm really looking forward to the game between Anna Sargisian and the world number two Fabiano Caruana. I think that could be an upset. Okay. My, my game of the round is Bach Sargisian. I think Benjamin Bach being much more inexperienced than Wesley So, going up against one of the most experienced, uh, most underrated players for the Eagles. To me, if that if that matchup doesn't start in, in a good way for the Archbishops, then then that, that's got to rattle them a little bit. Of course, in any round one, it's ridiculous to say that even a 4-0 sweep means the match is over, but, but I really feel like watch out for that matchup there between, between Sargisian and, and Benjamin Bach. And we are off to see the wizard. Apparently, is the this, bong cloud is about is to be this, played. Is this actually happening? Is it a joke? Is it April Fool's? D4, is, F6? Is Fabio Caruana about to play the bong cloud is in the Pro Chess League finals? Anna? Is he I don't know that it's trolling as much as it's a, a statement maybe to a fan or something that was requested of him. I have no idea, but I'm maybe he's trying to put on a show. Apparently my t-shirt gun isn't enough of a show for the fans here, and he's well, going to play the ball club. Well, you tried your best, then. I, I tried my best. best. I failed again. Right? Story of my life. I All still right. can't believe that F6 is on the board by uh, the world number I mean, was two. It, was it a mouse slip? Like, I'm dead serious. I'm looking down there. And why like, did he want to play F5, the Dutch? Even worse. I don't know. Fabiano doesn't even have his headphones on. What's up, Fabi? I think it's time to put your headphones on, bro. He Did something have happen? His headphones? Is, is this? Are we missing I something? I think a mouse slip must have happened. Something happened. Okay, there was a preview. Okay, that makes me feel better, honestly. <laughs> they are not It sure looks yet. good on you, Fabi. Looking good, dude. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, apparently, game one has not started, and there you see the shirt, like we were saying there, the uh, challenger to the throne this it's November and world number two. It's all right. We have just trash talked the world number two chess player, Fabiano Caruana. <laughs> something happened. Something ha I, I think something happened with, the, with, the, with the, the mouse. He did not want to play F6. Ma it was a mouse miscue. Okay, so we're we're figuring out what happened here. Now, the St. Louis Archbishops actually brought their own mou mice. Um, yes. When you refer to computers, mouse, you still s say plural mice, right? I would assume, but you're the so. native speaker, Danny. I, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> so the the they they brought a mouse. Maybe we can blame this one on manager Mike Cummer, who didn't fully fully prepare his uh, his team with a weird mouse, or maybe the mouse is buggy. It might be. They bought it at Best Buy. Is that a good store? To um, buy mice? Best Buy, not always the best buys. But they bought the they bought most it at expensive best buy. So mice <laughs> they at bu Best Buy. So, you know, one of the things that is we don't talk about a lot, but it really is a storyline, is how these players play in their comfort zone, mm -hmm. right? There's the, you you want to have the mouse you feel good about. You've played with it a lot. 
you you know you've got your setup you get your keyboard every you know players can be very ocd about their desk when they're yeah. playing serious chess games online right so i mean it's an issue and I'm, I'm glad they're clarifying it now whatever the bugs were with the mouse so we should see what happened to this particular mouse from best yep. buy and we'll, if we'll the find game out. will be restarting in a it minute. It looks like it is going to be restarting. This is a lot of fun. All right. I was already so, so excited about D4F6. I know, I, I, I was a, I, I'm sitting here calling for whatever it's going to be. Is it going to be a bong cloud? I turn around, Fabi's got his headphones off. At that point, I knew something was going on. Something was wrong. So. And the rest of the games haven't started yet either. We are waiting for Fabiano to restart his game. It's a, there's a little confusion downstairs yep. from That's what I That's all right. See. Shout out to the chat. Let's say hey to everybody. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Hi, everybody. Do you have a high emote? I want to get like a hi, everybody. I do have a high emote, high I think. Emote. Well, no, maybe it's the Anna you have, Hart. You have the best emotes. I your, have the Hasselhoff emote. Your emotes. channel is the best emotes. Thank you. Have you seen my Hasselhoff emote? Ha Hassel oh, I the have Hasselhoff David Hasselhoff, emote? yeah. We need to log you in here. Um, <laughs> hey, Smarter Chess, what's up? Distant Fire, everybody in the chat, this is your chance. Say, there's the, the legendary John Davis. Ah, oh, shout out to everyone. Showing off Hi, his emotes. Kevin. Hi, John. How's everyone doing? I want to give a shout out to our online audience and also our on-site audience. How excited are yeah, you about this match? Yeah, get excited again. Woo! Nope. Is okay. That, are, <laughs> you, are you that excited about this match? Say no, Lords versus Armin Eagles. Oh, looks like we're off again. We're off again, and this time we have real chess. So the distraction is real. That means the hype is real, and now we have... Uh, let's back this thing up and see what the opening was. Oop. Now, this type from real. D4, knight f6. Knight f6 was the intended move of Fabiano Caruana, not one pawn to f6. Unfortunately... There you go. Okay, so we have e6 and g6 together, which is not a very common way that you would ever see... Uh, that you see these openings here, but obviously in a response to a move like a3, black feels like he has a little more time. Mm -hmm. um, playing moves like d5 would look more like a traditional Chigorin, excuse me, after a3. Um, but with g6 and then bishop g7, the worry I have, and whenever you play a, a King's Indian structure having wasted the move e6, is, okay, sometimes there's potential dark square problems, sometimes e6 just is a waste of time, because eventually you're playing for d6 and e5. But what are your thoughts on, on this, what has become a very very obscure kind of Indian game here. The Chess.com ECL calls it the Indian game Mexican defense. I've never heard of that in my life. I must admit, I also have never so heard about it. So there you go. I could go for some Mexican right now. Oh, um, me that's too. later. That's later. <laughs> me too. I think in terms of Fabiano, he really wanted to go for an offbeat opening. Uh -huh. And Makes that's what sense. usually higher rated players do against the uh, opposition. That when you have a rating difference of a couple of hundred rating points right. in chess, you want to surprise your opponent, even if it's not the best opening in the world. Right. So clearly this for black isn't the op most objectively best uh, well, position yes but, but he's doing ahead. well in terms of like developing his pieces you, you can see that black has fianchetto both of his bishops he castled already then he will move his queen connect the rooks so in terms of development he's doing well but black's position is passive he only has made it to the sixth rank he hasn't crossed the board no, no, yet. No pieces have crossed the middle zone. No, and but he will he will need to start creating counterplay because so far everything is great for white, more space, and, and she, d5. she's going for it. I think she's going to play for e4 likely to hold the center together. Um, and but but watch for e5. You know this is this is very um, Hikaru Nakamura esque of being played by Fabian on Caruana. And now if you actually if you put these knights on e7 and d7, everybody, you would literally have a system employed by Hikaru Nakamura many times last week at Twitch Rivals, which was an event that uh, we did, and humans were taking on Komodo. So this type of system, as much as it has less space, has a lot of flexibility in the pawn structure where you can, you can kind of choose what breakthrough you want. And that's kind of, I guess, what Fabian is relying on, because now he commits to a King's Indian-style structure and just says, I'm totally fine with losing a tempo. I'll put the bishop back on c8 where it belongs to support the plan of f5. So um, I'm not saying that's even necessarily great, and I actually really like Anna's move to play knight e1 so that she can meet f5 with f3, mm -hmm. right? This is a very important thing in the King's Indian. If you, if you even waste a single tempo here, everybody, now, now you have to be very careful if f5 comes in and you don't have time to play f3 to support the center. So Anna playing what she's supposed to do, now she'll always be ready to meet f5 with f3. I think white's a little better, but I think it's, you know, it's a very typical King's Indian kind of position, though. 
Indeed, and it's funny to see that Black had to go bishop b7 and now he's back on c8 because the bishop is more active on that diagonal, so he doesn't mind wasting too yep. tempy on yep. those moves. In a close position, you can often get away with those kind of things, right? Mm -hmm. You can get away with a move you play and then you have to lose a bit of time. You don't. We don't recommend undeveloping your pieces in an open position where you might get checkmated. Fans, if you're wondering how we learn from these top players, but um, here Black can do that. I, I'm starting to feel a little bit nervous if I'm in... A on his corner now, just because I get nervous about this F4 and G5, and this looks very dangerous. We don't always see Fabiano play King's Indian attacks. I, I keep wanting to draw comparisons to Nakamura. Mm -hmm. That's more Hikaru style. But this looks like a good one for Black. And uh, Alright, we'll, we'll keep our eye on it. We do have a lift off on another board, so let's check on that. That's Nicolas Theodoro with the white pieces against Hike Martirosian. Here on this board, the two players are very close in terms of rating, so yep. this could be a draw and no one would be surprised about right. it. But I'm expecting a result. For some reason, I have the intuition that this game will bring a yeah, decisive well, I result. I think it's partly the style of these two guys, mm -hmm. right? They're, bo they're both dynamic fighters. I mean, already, we're not, we're not looking at a symmetrical position here, right? And um, I think there's tactics on the board that are already tricky enough to pause and think about. I wonder if White's looking at things like knight b5 with the hope that dark square transitions might lead to dark square problems. Um, even moves like d5 can run into things like queen to b4 sometimes, and there's real threats on, on d6. So not, not sure that happens or not, but queen to b6 also invites moves like bishop takes b4. Um, and you can, you can try to play knight c3 in some of these lines where you just go all in on a, on a sacrifice. This queen regrets how far she wandered from home, right? Not in Kansas anymore, Dorothy. Indeed. And so. I would like to thank Mapriel for the 5,000 bits. Thank you so much Whoa. for supporting the chess community that was constantly. Big. 5,000 bits from April. Thank you so much for all the love. It's been a long day already, and we have a lot of chess ahead. Indeed. Do you see that emote? That's Mepreal emote on my channel. That's nice. That's for Mepreal. Wow. There you go. I didn't even know that. Yeah. I have my laptop thanks to him. I love it. E3 played to Thank support Thank you, the I'm a little surprised by E3 rather than the more aggressive approaches. I guess that's my... That's my overly aggressive style coming. I want to go for like this. And if you take C4, there's moves like this. I've lost so many games as black in these positions that I, I want to feel like I can win one as white. But i got to remember, I'm not Nicholas Theodoro. Okay, mm -hmm. moving on. Are you sure you're not Nicholas uh, Theodoro? I'm sure uh, right now. I Ask me in a couple hours. All right. All right. Julian Perlenko, Zavin, what do you think? Well, this is the key game in the first round because Julian, we have mentioned already, he hasn't played a single game in the Pro Chess League. So this is clearly a wild card. I'm curious how the decision was made, but the, I believe it was mainly based on having the top three boards that they wanted. They couldn't have Ashley So, as we discussed. He's at right. the Grantchester and Ivory Coast. So they needed their top three boards and someone on board four right. that would make the rating average be lower than 2,500. That's part of the rules at the Pro Chess yep. League. And we'll see if it, if it backfires or not. I actually was just at the Denver Open, and a player local to Denver is Josh Bloomer, mm -hmm. who's a free agent that was acquired by Mike Cummer for the St. Louis Archbishops. And one of the things Mike does a great job of as the St. Louis Archbishops manager is knowing that free agent acquisitions are not just about top grandmasters. Yeah. They're about finding that underrated kind of diamond in the rough. And Josh Bloomer is a guy that comes in with a 1,900 feet at rating and I, I think I watched him beat two international masters at the Denver Open hmm. so we'll see if that pays off right Mike made a decision there to go away from a guy that has been holding down board four all year for the archbishops and uh, and that's I mean not not to take anything away from Julian who knows maybe this kid he's zero out of zero we have no idea maybe he goes 4-0 today and we're all eating our words right but it definitely feels really dangerous to throw somebody into this stage when they didn't play all year I agree with you. I'm really curious to see how Julian will do this weekend. For now, this position is just very solid. I think he chose the opening well against yep. Zavan, who is, uh, of course, <laughs> a very aggressive and talented player, facing someone who is almost 600 points above you, 500, and so my math is really bad. But for that choice, I think the opening was well decided by Julian. Yeah, I, I like his position so far. And... Uh I, I like his position too, but I'm curious what Zavin is thinking about his position. We're going to do our first check-in with the eye tracker for this matchup. Awesome. Between the Archbishops and the Armenian Eagles. For those of you who may be just tuning in, now you know what you're doing for the rest of your Saturday. You're sitting right here. You're sitting here forever, and that's what Zavin is looking at. So explain us, Danny, how does this eye tracking work? 
So it is a it is a device. It is a Toby eye tracker device, actually, that mm -hmm. um, we are planning to make use of often in all of our future chess shows. This is really our debut, but it's well calibrated to the players. Takes some time to get set up, which if you're here wondering why we take breaks, that's partly the reason. We have to recalibrate all the players. But it allows us to just, it tra it's very intuitive, super, super awesome technology that really shows you exactly where their eyes are darting. Now, what I wonder, Anna, is as far as strong chess players go, we know that they do a lot of thinking in their head. Mm -hmm. If not, you wouldn't see guys like Ivanchuk or Hikaru Nakamura almost never look at the board. Yeah, they're looking at the ceiling. Right, looking at the ceiling. I mean, because a lot of the game is being played in your in your mind, and the board is just kind of a medium, so to speak, right? But, but in some critical moments of blitz, I think it really can be very revealing to see what they're thinking about, at least in terms of a heat map area. We can very much see that Zavin wants to use the G file, maybe Rook G8, maybe Knight E4. He's looking at ways to get going, and I, I, I anticipate, so he looked at rook g8, and then he almost moved his mouse with his eye there. You saw he moved the, the mouse from f3 to g5. Indeed, he almost did it. And he's calculating lines that are way be beyond what we are seeing. He's not yeah. looking at, oh, I'm going to make this move, and that's it. He's looking at the position and calculating far ahead, sometimes calculations of three, four moves in advance, or they can go really deep, and it can be yep. a calculation of up to... 10, 12 moves, no, that, depending on the line. That's a great point. It's a great point. I think people have misconceptions that grandmasters are always trying to think as deeply as you can. A lot of times in here, it's, it's, in, it's intuition. It's trying to remember previous experiences you've had in the pattern and the pawn structure, and combined with accurate three, four move sets of calculations, so you don't blunder. But sometimes when it gets tactical, you got to kind of buckle up and, and go as deep as you can. I, he ultimately did play rook g8 that we were seeing at. He spent a lot of time clearly looking at knight g5. We could see his eyes all over that square. Mm -hmm. Um, if knight g5 now, I think black will have to defend the f7 pawn. But, um, you know, I think that you got to ask Zavin if he's happy with this. I think he probably is. He knows he's supposed to get a win in this game as the board won for the Eagles. And, uh, and I think he's got a position that he can play for a win given that it's becoming very dynamic with an open g file. Let's go back to the board for board one on the other side of things. Fabiana with black versus Ana Sargisian. Um, look how well she's playing here. I'm she loving the position keep, of white. She's keeping up, yeah. Indeed, she's heading toward the c6 square with her knight. At the same time, black is, of course, aiming at the g1 king. That's a typical king's Indian strategy. Black is going forward with the pawn storm and bringing the knight in. The queen will come to g6, h5, depending on how the rest of the pieces will be placed. But I would still be scared as white because the, an attack against your king psychologically yep. is it's way more difficult than a queen's You heard attack. me and Robert talking about that in the last uh, in the last set, right? Just that in a, especially king safety is always critical, but yep. it's even more paramount in, in faster time controls because mm -hmm. you just you can't play like a computer. You, you, you not, you're not always going to find the most accurate defensive move, so don't get your king involved, right? When the Indeed. king plays with the kids, um, it doesn't always work out. Um, all right, knight nice c6 played. Here's an interesting question, uh, Anna. Do you think it's time to... No, there's no, there's no ability to go all... Oh, I was just going to say, is, is he going all in now and he's just going to give up the a7 pawn? He's sacrificing his a7 pawn, but I, if the a7 I pawn was, drops, the b6 pawn is also but, vulnerable. But I, th I think he's going to sack the exchange. And wow. Go for it. I was just... Knight takes a7, rook takes c3, and then take on e4. To complete my own sentence, what I was going to say was, I don't think you can go all in yet. I think you've got to play rook c7, but as soon as I said he played it, and here's what I'm thinking he's, he's going all in for. I think he's going to take and take and then take here with a tempo. And now the knight comes to g3 with a fork of the rook and bishop on the next move. And he doesn't mind that white can enter the position with rook c7. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm not even sure it's good, but there we see the challenger to the world championship in November. He'll have a chance to play in the candidates again. That's what he's most known for, I think, for the fringe chess fanatics, but he's also just world number two and regularly dominating chess players and he is the highest rated player on site here in San Francisco. Yes, it's none other than the world champion challenger. Almost the world champion. He was so close to winning the match. It right. depended on just one single moment in London against Magnus yep. Carlsen. And this is Anna Sergisian, board four of the Armenia Eagles. Female players get uh, a reward for being female players, so to say. 
in terms of the rating average. So we and count the rating average differently for female players, which right. I think is a great idea in the pro chess. And the league. idea is to encourage, obviously, more women chess playing uh, in, at the highest levels, and obviously this encourages managers to look. We talked about finding a diamond in the rough with sometimes a young junior, but also a diamond in the rough in terms of if you, if you find yourself a, a, a female player who's already underrated, right, and you get that 100-point boost, it gives you more flexibility on the top boards, right? allows you to find stronger players up there because you know they can hold it down. And she's going to have her work cut out for in an all-out attack. But i got to be honest. I mean, if you're if you're in Ana's shoes, right, I mean, you, you got to be okay with this. I am in her shoes, like right? partially. You, Ana, you share the same name and, and often in her shoes. And if you're in her shoes, I think that I think you got to be okay with at least the craziness of this. You're like, well, here we go, right? I mean, he's going to prove it and checkmate me. And he, I know he's Fabiano Caruana. But at least I'm up material right now. And, and if I can defend, I might win one. Mm -hmm. um, I I'm think really I think she's thinking about, about taking a four. So the current position that Anna is looking at, you can see on the board right now, she's considering bishop takes f4 instead of f takes e4. You're saying or Th that's something what I else? I think. I mean, because she's paused here. I think if you if you if you don't take back, the problem is d5 is hanging. Oh, okay. I was going to say so. The only other way to guard d5 is to take f4, but I was wrong. The other way is bishop c4. But that feels awkward to block your own rook on the C file, right? Um, you know, this is um, definitely going to be a wild one to see how it finishes. Sargisian is up material. She's up two points if you keep track of, of chess.com point system there. But really, from a practical point of view, um, it's all going to come down to does she get checkmated or does she use her extra material to win? Indeed. In terms of material, this is an exchange up full wide, but the position is not easy at all because of the pressure on the king's side. I'm curious how she will continue now after he takes f3. What is your guess, Danny? I don't like the fact that g4 is going with tempo. It's so scary, right? If you take with the queen, here comes g4. Um, okay, you have to take it, right? Because taking h3 seems like you can't allow it. But then we get either bishop or knight takes. I, don't, I mean, bishop takes his tempo, but knight takes also very dangerous. And and the reason why we talk about, um, you know, you talk about points in chess, the rook is objectively worth more than the knight, five versus three. But what really matters in, in any particular chess position is the ability to create threats everybody, who has more access points for their pieces. These are all things that add up to, to the initiative, and, and it just feels like this is going to be really dangerous for Ana. Plus, spy this rook kind of hanging on that diagonal, it feels, it feels potentially very flimsy. Indeed. In the position you were showing, actually, after queen takes, f3, g4, h takes, knight takes, Black is threatening e4 because of this hanging rook on c3. Uh -huh. a along with queen h5, perhaps. Indeed. So, so I think that Fabiano taking a moment here, uh, and we're going to have that line on the board. Also, the time is very revealing in terms of how the players feel, right? It's not always the perfect indicator, everybody. You know, we're not saying the person who's up on time will always win, but it is a very good insight into how they feel about the position, their comfort level, um, and, and, and maybe their the fact that they played it before, their preparation. So... Okay, what do you think? There's so many other games to go to. The one we haven't really looked at at all yet, I think, has to get our attention now. Indeed. Anna, we have Sean Sargisian and Benjamin Bach. Knight a5, taking advantage of the pin on the b5. So in case of b takes a5, I want to capture the b7 bishop, and that will destroy black's pawn structure. The c6 pawn is weak, and the a doubled pawns. It's crazy, right? I, I, I do like Sargisian's position, and it makes me wonder if we back up to the moments before we got here. Was it possible b6 was a blunder? It looks like, because after bishop, bishop f3, this is forced. Yeah, and I'm with you. It feels like this is not ideal, right? Knight a5. Um, y you can't afford to trade this bishop for... for You can't afford to move it, let's say, and avoid the trade, because c6 falls. So the only other move I'm considering is moving the knight, but the trick is I don't even know if I have to take b7. I'll just take c6 right away, right? And just win the pawn straight up. So something tells me that Benjamin Bach feeling a little bit of his nerves having not played in as much PCL this year because this move B6 looks like a pawn you wish you could move back, right? And again, we've talked about chess.com bugs, but this is one we still have not fixed. Oh, we and we, we have back. called him a woman feed master, but now it has been corrected. He's a grandmaster, part of the Olympic team of the Netherlands. Benjamin Bach currently studying at the St. Louis University, and he may be in trouble, which is big news for Armenia. Yeah. He looks good in that jersey, though. Yes. Looks good. I like the color scheme there. I like that, too. Although yeah. I like our uniforms as well. I the do. red and I blue. I think ours is pretty good, too. I Very know. classy. A lot of people want these polos, and they can't have it. I know. No, it's they're not for sale. It's special. Yeah. It's only for us. Well, I think he's a little frustrated, though. Uh, 
and um, he seems is, frustrated. Is, is going to be thinking about this position with the knight on a5 for quite a while. So we'll let him do that. We'll let him do his job, and we'll do our job. Go commentate on another game. What do we think about this one here? Theodoro and Materiasson. He has just played rook dc1, defending the c4 pawn that was hanging after rook c8. If there's a trade on the a5, white will be happy about it because he'll, his rook from a1 will become active. Also, knight takes a5 is an option if yeah. he wants to put pressure on the b7 pawn. Yeah, I agree with you. I think that's, I think that's actually probably better. Black yeah. has got the pair of bishops, but he's under some pressure because of the more space that white has gained on the queen side. B takes a5, rook takes a5 has been played. After knight takes a5, probably b6 was just good enough, so he didn't want to go there. Yeah, but I like uh, I like the lines you gave, and it feels like Theodoro is doing well here, showing why, as we've said, he, he should have the GM title. He's one of the world's strongest international masters. And uh, he's got Materiasian on, a, on, a, on his heels just a little bit. The game between Caruana and Ana Sargisian is opening up. It feels like it's moments away from a knockout blow, so we're going to pop back to it, see if we can predict it. Can Let's we just go through the last few moves? So it was E takes yeah, F3, Queen takes F3, G4, just like just we like predicted. We looked at, yep. And after Knight takes G4, Bishop takes F4, E takes F4, the Rook is hanging, and Bishop D4 is coming, and Queen H5. Yep. Oh. You know, I, having covered a lot of the Atlantic Division this year, of course, for those of you who maybe don't follow the league as closely as you now will be, hit that follow button, follow the Pro Chess League. But uh, I feel like Fabiano has not gotten enough credit for how aggressive and dynamic he's played this year. You know, he has consistently, he scores three, he scores three and a half, sometimes 4-0. But I, have, I feel like I've seen him sacrifice the exchange mm -hmm. several times this year and just play very enterprising chess. Indeed, he really is enjoying these games. Yeah. And it's not the typical chess we see at elite tournaments where right. the rating is so similar that the players are very close in strength. And here he's taking more risk, but it also makes it more entertaining for us and for him. Yeah, yeah so he's uh, taking a moment to think before he decides how to deal with maybe capturing on C6 putting a bishop on the dark square. So um, and I saying that, hey, I'm offering you my rook, because if you take on c3, bishop takes c3, you're giving me that g7 bishop that has been defending your king. Yep. So she's sacrificing the exchange. She's giving back the material in order to get this precious bishop from g7. And Fabiano says, I hear you, but I'm going to take it for free by blocking off your queen's protection um, and actually renewing other types of threats like bishop to g4. Ooh. So this is... It's just getting really tough, and with only a minute on the clock, you feel for Ana here. You just you feel the pain. Now, let's go to the other board four versus board one, flipping the script the other side. Here, Julian is in a, in a much more uh, comfortable scenario than, than Ana is on the other side. Now, I, I think that Zavin is holding the cards. I think that looks like black is a little better, feels like the access points on C4, these doubled pawns, right? Probably this isolated pawn tells a story here, and, and White's worse. But but okay, I mean, Prolenko for his first Pro Chess League game ever, playing against literally the man of last year's Pro Chess League finals, right? Not a bad way to start things off. Not a bad way at all. G4. Well, he's doing his best to hold board one of the Armenian Eagles, the defending champions. They yep. said that they want to beat these guys, referring yep. to the Sainish archbishops. Yep. And the archbishops, too, came back with a little friendly trash talk, mm -hmm. saying that, well, they, they got to take revenge for what happened last That's year. Right. That's right. It's a grudge match. And again, for those who haven't followed all three years, the Pro Chess League 2017, the inaugural season, was, of course, won by the St. Louis archbishop. So... Um, and in many ways, if you're talking overall best records in history of the Pro Chess League, the Archbishops are the, are the team that can claim that. They've made it to the championship. They won the whole thing in 2017, made it to the Final Four here in San Francisco last year before losing to the Armenia Eagles in the semifinals. And now they have a rematch, a chance, a chance to right that, right that wrong. All right, well... Back to this game between Bach and Sargisian. Now, before this, this particular round started, I, I said this was my game to watch mm -hmm. for. And this, this, I feel like, is, is going to be a, a person to follow all day in Benjamin Bach because um, he hasn't played in as much pro chess league. But also because this matchup particularly, Sargisian, while the underrated one on, on, the, on paper, to me, I feel like he's the favorite in the game. Really do. Yes. Sean Sargassian has been doing extremely well the entire Pro Chess League. His rating is 2477, you see it next to his name, but that's the classical chess rating. And all these Armenian players, their top three players, 
they have a rating about 2,900 on chess.com, yep. and that yep. makes a huge difference. Their online rating and in Rapid and Blitz, how, how strong these players are. Shunt and Haik are the top two players of Armenia in terms of Rapid Chess, and Zavin Andresian is a top 15 player in the world in Blitz. There we see him right there, looking, looking very, very focused, looking good there. The red and the blue looks good on you. Barcelona. That's right, Barcelona and Armenia I'm a Madrid Eagles. fan, just uh, to um, say. <laughs> the, uh, he, he just looks confident, looks comfortable, enjoys this time control. I guess the one thing about the last move, Rook FC8 by Benjamin Bach, is it, it is maybe threatening a repetition of the queen. For, for example, I'm wondering that, well, okay, if white doesn't do anything, but even if you take A5, Anna, is there some sort of queen trappage? Look at that. Rook A8, and the queen has just run out of squares. The queen is trapped. It's incredible Amazingly, to see. Amazingly, actually, it. with so yeah. many open squares, none of them can be moved to. So, so Rook FC8, 94. Now, this move keeps the, the queen alive, because if, if Rook here, queen B7, you either play tickle and we have a draw, or you go to B8 and allow me an entry point into D6. So I, I think that's what 94 is all about. But um, if you play rook a8, queen b7, rook a b8, I can also go to a6 with my queen to come back on the light mm, squares. Okay, yeah, yeah, good point, good point. And note the b2 pawn is not capturable. Indeed, because of the hanging rook on c8. Yeah, okay, so Shant is uh, feeling good about the pawn that he stole there. And uh, not only is he up a pawn, but... Bach has some positional weaknesses, because if, if you don't take advantage of this queen who's kind of wandered so far, you're, you're going you're gonna to be worse even if you're not up a pawn. These pawns are so weak. Indeed. And in the meantime, on board one, Fabiano Corona with, with the black pieces, I think we should get back to okay, that game. Let's do it. The position is on fire. Yeah. This is, uh, this is how you play exciting chess. This is how you entertain the people. Let's let Fabiano hear it if he gets this win, everybody, because this is the kind of chess you hope these uh, the best players in the world will be playing all the time. Queen to d1 looks like it's coming. If I'm Fabiano, I like this move. Queen d1. He's probably considering whether he can take b5, but no, okay. He plays queen d1. I think the rook is going to come to e1. Um, the rook can also come to e2. Wow. Right? Maybe? I don't know. Maybe and unnecessary. Then promote. But I think rook e1 probably straightforward enough to do to do the job. Indeed, he finds it. Now the bishop will come to h3. And it's game over. And uh, like 2800s do. Oh, wait, bishop h3, rook takes f3. Well, still. Then you can take a pawn with yeah. the rook and win the queen, right? Indeed. So this is it. I is think he, Anna I has think tried very well. It, it's She started very well. The opening was good. And yeah. in the middle game, she had some pressure. She won an exchange. But then eventually, Fabi understood the complexity of the position yep. more than Anna did. And you can see there, she knows she knows this one's over. She throws in the towel, and like 2800s do, they win chess games. Fabiana Caruana helping to set the tone for the St. Louis Archbishops by winning in style here with the black pieces in game one. So that's the fir first point, and it's an advantage now for the St. Louis Archbishops. Remember, in the first round, it's board one versus board four, so yep. we also see board one of the Eagles facing board four of the Archbishops. And now after king to f3, we've got the, the battle between the board 2 Armenian Eagles, board 3 for the St. Louis Archbishops. Um, I, I have a hard time knowing who's better in this endgame, actually. I, I'm not sure. I mean, I think uh, the dynamic of the rook and bishop feels like it should be better in a position with pawns on both sides of the board. You, you, you gain pressure here. You've got pressure on d4 and inadvertently b2. But also the, uh, the center here is um, you know well controlled by white and the king is potentially more active coming over here to d3 sometimes i feel like this is a position that could backfire if you're not careful like like oh what in the world a very forcing line calculated clearly that check saved the day so that we didn't have a forky mode gone wild otherwise that would have been a uh, a lost piece but all right so it looks like looks like height calculated the better end of that line and he will end up uh, end up being up a pawn so my first instincts were correct. Rook and bishop was a better dynamic. I just didn't quite know how that how the smoke was going to clear. And the knight doesn't have an outpost. So knights can be better than bishops yep. if they have a good square. But this knight has nowhere to go from c6. It's not attacking anything. So it's actually in trouble. And it's now a pawn up for black. There is Nicholas Theodoro who is uh, going to have to try to fight for a draw here. And as you said, Anna, that was very... Uh, 
yeah, very good point that that knight on c6, not only does it not have an outpost square, it may not have any safe squares here very soon, right? The bishop comes back to c5. Um, and this is one of those rook endings that even the rook ending might be lost if you're not careful, right? If the c4 pawn becomes weak. You would never want to trade the d for the c pawn if you're black, but if you somehow protect that d6 pawn and can gang up on a weak pawn, this is, um, this is definitely looking like one that Hike is going to get. Indeed, I think Grandmaster Benjamin Feingold summed it up well in the chat. It's 0-1. Shout zero, out to Grandmaster zero, Feingold. One. Ben, you've been here all day. We appreciate that this is your favorite thing to do on a Saturday. Thanks for being here, Ben Feingold. Isn't it everybody's favorite thing it to do on a Saturday? It is everybody's favorite thing to do, right? Of course. And we, uh, we see a view there of Hike Materiasan. That was the last game we were looking at. We're, we're back back on the game here between Sean Sargisian and Benjamin Benjamin Boak, and... Uh, Boak has played the move king f8 after rook c1, but again, it just it feels like Shant is, is in control. I mean, he can even play knight c5 and go to an endgame with a two-result position, you know? Indeed. Boak has played king to f8 to defend the queen on e7. I believe that's the reason. So there was a pin on the seventh rank before he couldn't move the knight away from d7 because of the queen on a7 pinning the knight. Now after rook a c1, there's more pressure on the c6 pawn. Once the knight jumps away from e4, this pawn will be hanging. I really dislike this position for black because of the structural weaknesses. The c6 pawn, the a5 pawn. Yep. Well, and, and what's tough now if you're if you're a St. Louis Archbishop's fan is this is this is kind of going to recipe, but the recipe just you know may not taste as good as you thought when it comes out of the oven, right? Because Fabiano Caruana got his win here. But it looks like Boak is, is going to be fighting for a draw. Hike Materiasan is the only one who can win this. And Julian Perlenko is, is definitely going to be fighting for a draw here against Zavin Andreasian. Although, looking at the position, is he, is he doing that? Or is that knight getting trapped? He can bring it to a4, and I guess it's safe for now. For now, it seems safe, yes. And once you get to a4, then c5, finally the knight would have an outpost. <laughs> Grandmaster Benjamin Feingold reminding St. Louis that when he was on the team, they won the Pro Chess League in 2017. So maybe so that's the key. They, they there did you go. not They're make it last year. They're missing the magic Ben sauce, apparently. They need Ben to come back. By the way, mentioning the lineups, it's interesting to see that the Archbishops and the Eagles. So this is exactly the same semifinals we yep. saw last year here in the Foursome You and I Foundry. literally covered this match. This is, this is deja vu, parallel universe. Indeed, but the thing is, is the same teams, same semifinals, but Different only players. one player is yep. the same. That's Andreasian. Yep. One player out of the eight players. A hundred percent, yeah. And uh, Fabiano couldn't make it last year. We know he wanted to, but uh, he is here this year, and uh, maybe he can he can right the wrong of, of the bishops going down. But like I said, I think I think, you know, Fabiano's gotta gotta go big because right now right now the Eagles are, are looking good. Um, the swing game to me, if we expect Zavin to be able to play well, and the reason we like black is white just has more pawn weaknesses than black does. D four is falling as soon as Zavin wants to take it. He's in no rush, right? Because that pawn is going nowhere. So instead he's making weaknesses, creating counterplay. So if we expect Zavin to get this one and right now, as we said, Hike is kind of doing work here. Very good technique being showed. Honestly, it's just a king march away probably from a resignation. Uh, I actually don't like that move. I think Hike should have found a way to keep the rook. Uh, I guess I guess it was being attacked, so yeah, he had to move it. Hmm. LOL. Getting tired. Um, okay, but still, I mean, the king can come to e5, and, and this is just an easy position for Hike. So, so this is the swing game right here. Whoa, what happened? Uh, can we just uh, uh, replay yeah, we, those moves? You, yeah, of course we can. So we anticipated a blunder in this game, everybody, if you're just joining us by Benjamin Boak, and we, we think we're still right. Um, Sargisian was pushing. He wins the c5 pawn. And after rook a8, he actually sacrifices his queen. Wow. Rather than trying to wiggle out. Now, note this was not forced, everybody, so I think it's a sign that Sean thinks it's good because he could play queen b7. And if rook b8, queen a6, as Anna pointed out earlier... And if this rook comes to b8, you can you can get out other ways, right? So this was not necessary. It means he liked the queen sacrifice, gets two rooks for the lady and a pass c pawn. And I think Sargisian is is flexing in this game here. I think he knows he what is, he's doing. He's very confident about it. So it's two rooks and a pass pawn that is three squares away from promotion, as everyone can see. But yep. it's 
three squares that are almost all protected by white, so you've got the C8 square covered at the moment, and also the C6 square. It's going to be very difficult for black to try to stop that pawn. You can also not create a blockade on C7 with the yep. queen, because the knight will always come back well, to B5. And one thing you can consider is whether whether an obstacle bishop kind of attack against the king would be enough. You don't really want to hang the E3 pawn with check, so that's the reason I... Okay, so I'm looking at line like this, and then here. Uh, the problem is you take with E3 check and go here, but the C-pawn is so strong, it makes me wonder about moves that just make Black's mm -hmm. life really, really hard, right? And, okay, Sargisian, as we can see on camera, obviously very focused, going to be calculating lines like that. Ultimately, he settles on no need to do it, right? Why give up the C-pawn and go crazy? He plays knight C6 and rook D1. Yeah, honestly, this seems like the best decision. He's, he's threatening checkmate on D8. Um, if that knight moves, um, looks very good. Very good for... I think the best performing international master we've had all season long in Sean Sargisian. Indeed. Benjamin goes for queen to a3. The knight is untouchable because of the hanging rook on c1. And he's also threatening queen takes e3 check. So I still has to be careful. But this position, it feels like it can be a handshake in a few moves with some precise moves by white. Yep. And so checking back in on the other games, as we said, Hike is, uh, Hike is, Hike is telling Theodore to take a hike. L oh. LOL, right? Oh, Danny's, get getting Danny's getting tired. Danny's getting tired. The bad puns are coming out. <laughs> the bad um, puns. But uh, right now he is just on the grind and uh, completely winning. Um, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if Theodore resigns here. The threat is bishop to e3. Um, okay, bishop e3 now is met by the, the rook giving check and the knight safe, but should be a number of things. Yeah, d5 makes sense. And uh, it's a moment, moments away. You can play d4, you can play bishop e3, rook c6, and king b5. It's over. And indeed, Nicholas Theodoro agrees. Handshake. So. Criari wins Perlenko, for the Armenia Eagles. Perlenko and, Z and Zavin. This looking tough for Julian. The b rook is going to come to h8. He's going to take h5. And that king is going to get mated. I mean, just calling my shot there. That, that I don't know. It looks like a problem for white. It does look like a problem. And it could well mean 3-1 to one for right. the Eagles. And I, I mean, I think that's where we're headed. And I'm, I'm not even... Obviously, this has been, you know, sort of my anticipation of, of the, the worry you have if you're in, in the St. Louis Archbishop's corner here is even if Fabiano does what he's supposed to do, will that be enough for the Archbishop? So... Um, well, if Fabiano wins all his games, that's four points. And right, you need eight and a half in order to win the match. Absolutely. So he, but getting you halfway there, right, against the team that is the reigning champions, the defending champions, and just so stacked on every board. It's, um, and I, I feel that as this match goes on, it's, it's even harder because of the potential, um, the potential um, unbalance on board four. But okay. So we'll see. And right now, this looks like a game that Zavin is supposed to get. He's on the verge of threatening checkmate with rook g2 and knight f2, which is why he played king f4. The threat is on the board of mate and 2, everybody. Rook g2, king h1, knight f2, Julian. Playing his first ever pro chess league game under so much pressure against board 1 of the reigning champions. Yep. This is a very tough moment There's, for Julian. There it is. There's an easy way to win the exchange, check and take e3. And uh, that's a tough one. So the, the last game that still has potentially some swing to it here is the game between Sargisian and Boak. Julian shaking his head there. It's a frustrating one. And uh but but look at this one. Okay. Let's give let's give uh Benji some credit here. He has managed to get rid of the C pawn, which was the main weapon yeah. of white in that yeah. position. A potential queen and is gone. Yeah, this is this is huge, right? I mean, how how? Let's back up and see how did how did Boke, uh, those who want to see the the final moments that's about to happen here, um, I think that. Okay, very nice. Uh, actually, H7 is met by checkmate on H6. That's beautiful. Painful. So the final moments there, unfortunately for Mr. Paleko, but um, how in the world did did Benji? Another point for the Armenia Eagles. But but he managed to corral that pawn, so really good defense. It makes me think that perhaps this move knight c6 wasn't as good as Shant originally thought. Maybe there was something more forcing, but look at look at Boke defending. I think that I think that what happened was Sargisian missed Queen A3. P 
pinning the rook to the first rank there, right? Because of the rook hanging, and now all of a sudden c5 falls. So if we look at it, yeah, this was the blunder. He played knight c6, thinking that after rook d1, it was like, I, I, frankly, mm -hmm. I thought it was lights out. When, I, when we great. played here, I was like, oh, this is just winning for, for white. And then the move queen a3 not only keeps an eye, but threatens knight c5. And Benjamin Boak has got himself right back within drawing territory of this game. Would be a huge half point save. I mean, even if it's not ideal on paper, I think Bulk being black in a position where he was really under pressure would be a, a sigh of relief for the archbishops and feel like, all right, let's let's find ourselves here and, and, and one round at a time. Indeed, this could be a huge escape. And now black is threatening knight f2, the obvious fork, king g1 to protect the f2 square, but black has clearly improved his position over mm -hmm. the last few moves. Probably best result I'm thinking is a draw. Maybe, maybe white still has more winning chances than I'm realizing. I mean, the two rooks should be better than the queen. And if you, you, know, if you find a way at any point for this rook to just hop over and, but keep the same dynamic, then you're going to have the knight and rook working together. So the, the biggest worry, actually, if you're an Armenian Eagles fan, is I suddenly look at the clock. Mm -hmm. Look at that. So Boke, you know, that's what grandmasters do. Even when they don't have their best game and they're down, he recognizes, all right, like one thing I have to do here is play fast. Because if I can stay up on the clock, I'm going to have a chance later on, and that's huge. According to Benjamin Feingold, shout out to Grandmaster Feingold one more time, it's 0-1. Are we taking his call on this game? I'm pretty sure he already said 1-0 earlier, so I I usually block black out whenever Ben's in the Twitch chat, so you know I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll let you predict his many predictions. But um, all right. I, Maybe, maybe indeed. And, and, and Ben is right in the sense that we talk a lot about how the queen is just a better piece in time scrambles. Even if, mm -hmm. more, even if the unbiased viewpoint is the other pieces should be better, the queen is easier to play with. And so Balk gets full credit for coming all the way back here. If he wins this game, I, I mean, then I have to take back everything I said. That, that's a real message sender. That says that having him in the lineup is huge and, uh, and wow. Even like this, the position for Shant must have been really good earlier. We thought yep. that was a decisive advantage of Wow, and they just oh. agree to a draw. Okay. That was I, I'm surprising. a little surprised by that. I think that Bulk feels like he got away with one, so he's happy with the draw. Sargisian probably a little frustrated. He knows that one got away from him. But still, if we're just taking a second to count our eggs here in the basket, you still got to be happy if you're Armenia. Round one is in the books, and they are up by a point. Up by a point. Fabiano has won his game as it was expected from the world number two. But Anna Sergeyevsian, I think she's going to do well in the next games because she was brave. She went for it against Fabiano too. Not an easy opponent to face, but she did her best. And yep. it was a very complex position. Yep. And sometimes when you're willing to dive into complex positions despite a bad result, you're, you're almost getting yourself in shape, right? You're warming up for the yep. rest of the games, and it's a marathon, not a sprint. That's exactly what it is here at the Pro Chess League Finals. So as we move on to round two here, in the matchup between the St. Louis Archbishops and the Armenian Eagles. We're going to take a very, very quick break. Thank all of you for being here. You're not going anywhere. Don't go you're, anywhere. You're not going anywhere. <laughs> Anna will get you if you go I anywhere. Will. She Personally, will get you. That's I'm right. going to your house. And uh, we will be right back. See you soon.
I'm here with somebody who needs no introduction. Fabiano Caruana, world number two. Unless you're here in the United States, then number one in our hearts. Fabiano, let's start off by sharing your thoughts on the last round. Yeah, it was, uh, I mean, my game was tough. Uh, I, I think she played extremely strongly and, I, I mean, at the start it was a, it was a total mess. But I, I always had more time on the clock and once it started to get complicated, um, it was tough for her to defend because I was sort of always attacking and she, she had a material advantage, but she had to defend a tough position. Um, so I, I was happy with my game, but of course the match, uh, I mean, the, the first round didn't go very well for us. At some point it looked like we might have uh, been down 3-1, so actually minus one seems like a good result after some of the positions in, in the games. Being such a highly rated player, world number two, do you feel a lot of responsibility leading the team? Yeah, I mean, uh, of course, I, I have to play well. Um, and there's quite a lot of pressure, but uh, I'm sort of used to it. So, And I've played a lot of team events, so I'm, I'm used to having to perform for the team. And uh, I don't think I play any worse uh, when I'm playing for a team. I, I think actually it might um, make me more confident and more, uh, yeah, more motivated to play well. Can you elaborate a little bit more on how your strategy or style of play changes when it's a team event? It doesn't change. I, I don't try to change how I would play. It's just when it comes down to if I have a choice between, between a draw or playing on, uh, then I have to make a decision based on the, the team situation. But for my style, it doesn't change anything. This is a very different event than you're used to playing. It's much more like an eSport event. At some point during the game, I heard that your mouse was spazzing out a little bit. Can you explain? Yeah, at the start, the first move, I, I tried to play Knight F6, and it, it played F6 for me. Um, and I would have understood it if I, if I was forced to keep that move, but uh, I'm also grateful that there were no complaints for aborting the game and restarting it and allowing me to, <laughs> to play a normal first move. You also have to have headphones on. Can you share a little bit about what kind of music you're listening to? I don't know. I, I didn't pick it, so it's like a soundtrack to a movie. Sometimes it gets quiet, and then sometimes uh, <laughs> there, there's a lot of action, and suddenly the drums start, and... Um, so it's kind of interesting. Um, not normally the music I would listen to during a game, but I, I didn't mind it. It didn't really distract me. You know you can change the music, right? Are you considering doing that? Well, I don't want to play around with the, <laughs> their media player because I did that once and then, the, and then it just closed the whole thing. And I'm worried that if it closes the whole thing, suddenly I can hear the commentary, which I'm, I'm sort of a bit paranoid about uh, having happen. You also have the live audience right in front of you. Have you been able to hear them at all? I can't really make out anything. I can hear noises in the background, but that's about it. And last question. Can you share a little bit about what it's like playing in front of a much more loud and interactive audience than maybe you've experienced before? It's actually fun because after my game is finished, I join the audience and I can enjoy watching the games. Uh, and, and usually once it comes down to the last few seconds, there's a lot of action, so it's fun to watch. And one more question. Do you feel like a celebrity here? A lot of people are trying to get a photo with you. Um, well, I wouldn't say a celebrity, but I'm, I'm you know... Yeah, it's nice to have fans around. You know. Thank you. Back to you. Uh, B. Oh, wait, we're not chanting anymore. Sorry, <laughs> I forgot. That has been our local yep. celebrity and worldwide celebrity, Fabiano Caruana. Shout out to him one more time. Yeah, and he, and he did what he was supposed to do, right? He won, a, he won a very nice game, very clean game as Black. A very exciting game. Honestly, we were talking about the fact that he's played as many games as any of the top boards mm -hmm. in the Pro Chess League all year. 57 uh, coming in, and, uh, and he's played a very aggressive, enterprising chess, and uh, it's been exciting to see. And... and to be totally honest, right, the Bishops are going to need every victory here today because regardless of Fabiano's win in that great interview, they are down by one point. If we pull up the results and talk about what just happened in the first set of games here, what, what we have is a one-game lead heading into round two for the Armenia Eagles. And uh, and what are your thoughts? I mean, what do they need to do to, to right the ship? What, is, what do the rest of the Archbishops need to do to help Fabiano out? It's clear that it won't be enough that Fabiano, if Fabiano wins all his games, which I'm not sure, by the way, if he's going to win four out of four because the other three Armenian players are dangerous, rapid, yep. and blitz Absolutely. players online. So it's not even clear that Fabiano can get the perfect score. But even if he goes four out of four, uh, Bok and Theodore will have to get 
way more points. Right. So Theodore losing the first round, that was that was really tough for the Archbishops. Bok has saved half a point. We thought that he was also in danger. So that right. draw is actually a good result for the Archbishops. Yeah, as Fabiano said, it looked like at one point the Archbishops might be down by a score of 3-1, to one, but they're not. They're down 2.5, and, and, and we still have three rounds to play. So a lot of exciting chess ahead. The next set of pairings will have... Uh, usually the way this works is the board ones kind of creep closer to each other throughout the match. So starts out with board one versus board four. Now we have board one versus board three. Uh, respectively, what that looks like is Nicholas Theodoro versus Zavin Andreasian, and then Fabiano Caruana versus Sean Sargisian. And of course, as you said, you've been waiting for Anna Sargisian to get some upsets, right? This is going to be a big one right here. She will now have the black pieces, though, mm -hmm. against Benjamin Boca, gets his first white of the weekend. So we'll see how that one goes down. And speaking of which... The game has just begun. We are now underway with that exact game. It's a Slav defense, the exchange variation of the Slav. I'm a little surprised that Bok has picked the exchange variation, which is supposed to be very solid, but I'm sure that he has something up his sleeve in his repertoire, a good preparation by the Dutch Olympic team. Yeah, you know, uh, we, we talked about the deceptive dangers of this line. We had an exchange, uh, exchange, not French, it was an exchange Slav. Uh, earlier, Lee Chow played it and uh, actually achieved a potentially winning position and we feel may have missed a winning tactic that, who knows, may have changed the whole match. Mm -hmm. uh, queen sacrifice spotted by Robert. So, um, But th these positions can be deceptively very, very dangerous, despite the fact that the structure is symmetrical, seems sort of harmless. Um, it's really not the case. And, and now you see Sargisian, in order to avoid tactics, actually has to part with the bishop pair. So already you're feeling uh, kind of comfortable if you're if you're Benjamin Bok, and part of the reason is that this structure here can be bad in these in these slobs, but often you still have the knight here coming to a5 and c4, kind of poking at this outpost square along with the weak pawn. The fact that that knight was traded means that black lacks pressure on the c file, so white's going to be able to exchange the c pawn at some point. So I'm already liking Bok's uh, middle game here. Yes, and in this variation of the exchange variation. Uh, of the Slav defense, White has the pair of bishops. Mm -hmm. We will see the c4 pushes Danny mentioned, and then it's a slightly better position for White. So where where could that have gone a little differently for Anna? I wonder actually. I think that already here the move bishop b4 is a let's see that's gonna that's gonna lead to variations that are forced that we just saw. Um, it's part of the danger of playing the bishop f5 move, to be honest. Moving the bishop outside of the pawn chain is what leads to these types of tactics where b7 and d5 get overwhelmed, and uh, and then you're ultimately forced to play a move like bishop b4. Um, in the game with Li Chao, we talked about the fact that even though in the position black actually ultimately ended up with a bishop here, we talked about being a French mm -hmm. bishop, but I, I defended the French bishop here against Robert. Thank you so much, And Danny. I said that the idea is that the queen side becomes open, and the bishop finds finds plenty of activity over here. Or at least that's sort of the goal in the structure, right? The C file's open. You've got play over here. That's where you should be putting your pieces. So sometimes I think a passive piece uh, that, or a piece that, let's say, looks looks passed. Uh, Benjamin Bach. Okay, I'm sorry. Thank you for correcting me. Yasser Sarawan, one Shout and only. Shout out to the one and only Grandmaster Yasser Sarawan. I was looking at the chat and not you were believing like, my eyes. You were like, wait, is that Yasser Sarawan? Is that the real All Yasser Sarawan? All it takes Sarawan? is me mispronouncing a Dutchman's name for Yasser Sarawan to reveal himself as a lurker. He's been <laughs> watching the show Lurking. And now you've revealed yourself, Yasser. Who knew? Yeah, joke's on you, buddy. You're, tr <laughs> you're trapped. I was mispronouncing on, on purpose. You're welcome, world. Now we know that Yasser's watching the show. Shout out to the one and only Grandmaster Yasser Sairavan, part of the Chesbra crew. And Eric Hansen is here on behalf of the Chesbras, who didn't make it to the semifinals, but of course they have a huge following on Twitch. Lots That's of right. fans. That's right. Well, um, we have the bishop pair here for Bach and... Uh, we uh, will also never mispronounce that name again now that Yasser has been caught lurking. So, Zavin chess mood against Nicholas Theodoro. Now, we highlighted the potential for upsets with the boards 2 and boards 3 for the Armenian Eagles, but I also think Theodoro is uh, a super strong player capable of some upsets, so even holding a draw against Andreasen would be a good result for the Bishops. And Yasser is in Malmo. I'm just reading the chat. He's saying hi to both yeah. you and me. Shout out. Hey, Yas. An honor. Hi, yes, we'll, sir. we'll see you soon. Um, but all right, so what's it? We have an, uh, a unique little Joko piano here. The knight coming to d2 is this early is a slightly awkward maneuver. But Zavin plays these positions very quickly and intuitively. He's such a good blitz player. 
um, and and just relies on his intuition very often, and and relies on his on his eyes to do some work too. Let's bring it back. Let's bring back the eye tracker and see what that eye movement looks like. This is the viewpoint of Zavin Andreasian playing white in this position. You see his focus right now on the critical parts of the center. Um, a five and a half looking at, at rookie one. He's look how just he immediately thinking about knight f1, knight c4. I love them. I mean, that's exactly the plans that we know to be true, right? The knight wants to come to c4. The knight mm -hmm. wants to come to f1, often to e3. That's why he keeps looking at this square here. Considering now how to deal with the tension, he decides to save the bishop, and then he'll go back, go back to the idea, I think, of maneuvering that knight around, probably to f1 and e3. Um, the knight f1, knight g3 would be a typical maneuver in the Italian and Spanish openings, as well as going for d4 later on, preparing to push d4 in the center. I think he's calculating d5 now. He keeps looking back at the center, and he's wondering about f4 tactics. Let me show a common idea in this line. If d5 takes, takes, one thing to be aware of is that sometimes tricks here uh, can be very dangerous. If you take everything, there's tactics like bishop takes f2 and then queen f6. Now, they don't work here because the knight can come to f3. Mm -hmm. But watch out for tactics on this on this diagonal line. And, okay, black does ultimately go to d5, and pretty sure this e5 pawn cannot be taken. Um, or, or will black just take with the bishop? We shall see what Theodore will choose. Definitely our audience is loving the new feature. I'm impressed by this eye tracking. Yep. I have never seen it in practice, how it works. And seeing this blue ghost flying around the board, showing where Zavin and Rassian is looking, yep. I find it really spectacular. Yeah. Well, we, uh, we first saw it at, at TwitchCon and said, hey, that looks like it would be something cool for chess. And uh, we've been kind of preparing to, to start, start bringing this into some of the chess coverage here for a while. So glad people like it. Looking at that e4 square, obviously, because he wants to put a pony on it. If you like it, then you put a pony on it. <laughs> and now he's going to go for the f5 square. There, Now he's looking at f5 where he's got two knights staring down. And also the h5 square. So uh, pieces are starting to come together on the king's side. And that's where Zavin's eyes are very, very focused. h5, f5. Lots of squares. I'm, I'm, I'm really feeling like Zavin knows this position better than Theodoro. Okay, time advantage is only, only a little bit, but just the tempo of the game. And now I'm wondering if it's time to, to put a knight on one of these squares. He may be considering that or preparing for knight f5 with a move like queen to f3. We still have not had, uh, right as I say that, uh, we go to the board and, and Anna did indeed already uh, finally move, but she spent quite some time thinking before playing queen a5, nearly four minutes in fact, and then plays the move on the board that we have, and white can castle and then try for c4. I still just feel like this is going to be a slightly better middle game for Bach with the bishop pair and kind of a good version of an exchange semi-slav. I agree that white's position is more pleasant, slightly better, and that's not something you want to get against a 2600 grandmaster. The other game that the other game that just got underway, Mickey Tarion versus Julian Perlico. Julian Perlico playing his second game in the Pro League. He debuted with a defeat against the top board of the Eagles. That yep. was a tough game. We shall see if he will start scoring. But as Artek Manukian, the captain of the Eagles, uh, have said it, it, it's more important for board four that they don't lose mm -hmm. to the other board four. So. Prolaiko will have his most important game in round four against Anna Sargissian. Yep. The results that he has earlier are not that important. It's nice if he can get half a point or even a, a full point as an upset against the other players, but not losing to the other port f board four. That's what the captain of the reigning champions, Artak Manukian, said. Yep. And I, I like Prolaiko's position here. I like he's playing confidently. He puts the knight on e4 and probably wants to play f5. I think one of the issues, though, is even if you transition into that sort of Dutch stonewall structure with all these pawns here is that you're not really ever threatening a full out mating attack when you're attacking someone who's fiend kettoed their uh, their king because the king is very safe with a bishop here this pawn structure is just super solid and uh, so I actually like this move bishop e3 by hike he's probably going to look for knight to d2 the point is if you can trade off this knight eventually you organize sort of an explosion here on the light squares, open up the center, and uh, that can make f5 really bad. So Perlico needs to be very careful before he just pushes that f1. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. And, and he is, okay. Very In the good. game of Benjamin Bok, I see that Grandmaster Yasser Saravan likes the move f2 to f3 for Benjamin. Just okay. wanted to point out that 
We have the legendary Grandmaster Yasser Saravan in the chat, and he's suggesting that move for Benjamin Bach. Makes sense, right? Holds the E4 square. You get castled. You know, the other thing that F3 does, and maybe this is part of Yaz's idea, is it threatens G4, and maybe even H4 and H5. And sometimes these kings can actually be totally safe on squares like F2 in a position where you control the pawn breaks, right? Robert talks a lot about that. I think that if you control the pawn breaks, you're not really worried about the king being in the center where it might normally uh, come under fire. So I'm not sure if that's what Yaz's idea, but looking at F3, or if that's just my crazy attacking brain, I don't know. One of those things is true, <laughs> but I, I, do like, I do like Yaz's F3 as well. I like it too. Let's see if Benjamin goes for it. And that's Anna Sergisian, board four of the Armenian Eagles. She has performed excellently so far in the Pro Chess League, one yep. of the top performers on board four, and now trying to get this game against Benjamin Bok. If he can get, if she can get half a point, it's already, of course, a huge result for yep. a board four. Yeah, we spy Teddy Coleman, Alejandro Ramirez, just chilling behind Benjamin Bok there. If you can hear us, Alejandro I'm sure and they crew, can hear us. let's. Let's, Alejandro let's Ro wave to Al the Alejandro live audience. It, it's either a jacket or it's There a, we go, Robert pajamas. as well. Can we say hi to the live audience, to our online audience as well? Yeah, there the you go. Alejandro, are those pajamas you're wearing? <laughs> <laughs> He's ignoring me. Oh, and there's a Robert Hess speaking <laughs> his head out. And Tatev as well. <laughs> pretty funny. Once again, right. welcome everyone, those of you who came to see us on site at the Folsom Foundry. Can we just give a huge, can, can you just yell can you give as us some much noise? as you can? Please, Robert, for yell for me. Match. Robert, yell. How excited are you about the St. Louis Archbishop versus Armenia Eagles match? No, they're distracted. All side it's audience afternoon. ignoring us completely. Ignoring I'm us. trying my best. All right. Well, bye. we'll just keep doing commentary. You guys don't do your job, but we do our job. <laughs> All right. Night F1. And, uh, this is, okay, this is typical. Bok has played F3, just to mention. Yasser is channeling Yasser's his advice. inner bending. A good, yes. a good Dutch lab following Yasser's advice here. Plays F3. I actually, I actually really like this idea, potentially playing G4. So we'll see how Bok plays it. Um, all right, the other game we haven't really looked at yet is the one between Caruana and Sargisian. Um, okay, I think this is, this is where Fabiano starts to earn his, you know, earn his paycheck, so to mm -hmm. speak, right? He's got to take down these guys that are underrated, very good at rapping and blitz. Fabiano Caruana, as white, got to win this game. That's what he's here for. The chat is more hype than the live crowd here. Thank you, chat, for coming through. They, they heard, you. They heard, they heard your call. We appreciate you. We yeah, appreciate we love that. you. Thank you so much for our online and on-site audience. We appreciate everyone the tuning in to the Pro Chess League Finals. This is the semifinals between the Archbishops and the the Eagles, the defending champions, and it's a grudge match. The Eagles yep. won this exact same match last year in order to get to the finals, win the finals, and the Archbishops are now here to take a revenge on the Armenian team. Yeah, and we'll see. I mean, this is... This is... Uh, I, I won't be surprised if these teams continue to face off in, in the semifinals for years to come in the Pro Chess League. Uh, St. Louis obviously puts a lot of effort into having a great team there. We love it. And... Uh, of course you can. Of course you can, Chess Bay. Chess Bay, thank you do, for the do, call do to action. You, do. do you see the Anna Banana emote? That's I a new it. one on I my love channel. It. I love it. And uh, we've, uh, and of course, Armenia has just a, a great team culture in general. We talk about that a lot. And um, so, okay. I mean, no surprise that they played last year in the semifinals, and they're right back at it. Let, let's talk about this move, Knight G4, by Sean. Because, okay, the obvious point is you're hitting F2, but a piece is coming to E3, I assume. Unless, unless Fabi thinks he can play d4 with the king in the center, the, okay, right as he does it, I was going to say the risk of that is that when you start to see lines like this, I, I just start thinking of variations where, where white's king gets in trouble having not castled. So we'll, we'll find out if that's something that Sargisian likes. But the idea of knight to g4 was that if you didn't play something like d4, Let's say you did something like, like bishop e3. I think black was just going to play f5 and just really try to get aggressive early here. Um, but Fabi plays d4, and now Shant has his work cut out for him. We see him focused focused in there. I really like the camera angle from here. So we see Shant, but also the screen of his teammates. Yep, it's and, and, Ju team and Julian Prolenko back there. Indeed. So you've got Julian Proleko playing board four for the Archbishops, facing off against board two, Haik Materiasian, and then you have Sean Sargisian. There's his opponent, Fabiano Caruana. 
And he said that he he just listens to whatever. <laughs> listens to what he's afraid he's going to accidentally close the media player, right? That's so that kinda, he can hear that's us. That's what I tell my son when I refuse to change the music. I say, no, I'm just afraid I'm going to do accident. I don't want to listen to your music. Dad, I can figure it out. Let me do my own music. No, I can't. No, don't do it. Aww. So I think What's that your music like? I imagine some Disney hits are on it. Uh, Disney hits, of course, right? Mm. Got to get good your, choice. Good choice. You're under the sea on. Got to get a your little bit of frozen. A little bit of let it go, right? Mm, you know, of let course. It go. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, d4 was played. Captures, captures. I, I think bishop b4 checks. So what was the line I looked at? Bishop b4, bishop d2 here. I guess the problem is bishop takes c6. Now you can't take back because you lose a piece. So you have to take d2 a check, and then Fabi gets to kind of right the ship, and uh, take back. But all right, I mean, I guess this would be ideal for Caruana because he ends up in the end with a big center and this knight sort of looking silly over here, having played knight g4. So um, so maybe bishop b4 not as good as I thought, but if that's the case, it makes me question Shant's whole idea here. It feels like this was a little bit superficial mm -hmm. to try to punish punish the world number two for not castling, um, which is the more typical approach first, but maybe Shant got a little bit too excited thinking he was going to punish him because now... There's a reason d4 doesn't happen early in these Joko piano structures, everybody, because normally e4 is falling. Just note that if this knight were on f6 where it's supposed to be, bishop b4 check would just win a pawn here. So, you know, when you talk about principles holding up, we like that as chess coaches because mm -hmm. it makes us feel like, yeah, that's right. Don't move a piece twice in the opening. Don't go after superficial threats like the pawn on f2 because you will be punished by a big center. And now here, if Fabi does that, then you say, yeah, see, kids, play good chess. Indeed. Stay in school. <laughs> He's not afraid of bishop b4 check because he can simply cover on the d2 square. Bishop yep. d2, develop that bishop, trade the b4 bishop of black. And he's got a full control of the center and will castle soon if the f1 knight jumps to d2. Now the game we haven't looked at in a while, let's check on it. I don't even know if we've checked in at all, but Perleko is taking on Hike Materials. Oh, yes, we did. That's right. This was the game with knight e4 and after bishop e3. Uh, Julian, I think, made the right decision not to get too crazy with the F-pawn playing mm -hmm. a stone wall. Instead, we had this sort of transition, and and I, th I think Black's doing okay here, actually. I think that Julian is uh, is holding his own. Um, White's a little bit better, maybe. I guess with the space advantage, this bishop on, on B7 is kind of awkward. Blocked behind the pawn chain. But E4 is also an outpost square, and at some point you put a knight there, right? And, and Ooh, wait. Oh, do we going have a do we have an all attack? in, f5. And White doesn't mind that his pawn structure the, with these doubled e-pawns is looking funky after f5. So those two e-pawns are isolated. It's all about the attack. He wants to go f6. Blow it open. So if e takes f5, knight takes f5, that knight on f5 will be really dangerous. And the d5 pawn becomes vulnerable. Yeah, but I guess the e-pawns are also doubled, so... Yes, th that's the thing. This, this is a permanent structural disadvantage that yep. White is accepting for the dynamic factor, which is yep. the initiative. Yep. No, well said. Yeah, F5 is, F5 is you're all in, right? I mean, because you're going to be worse positionally, so you better get the goods. Um, interesting. Well, he's up three minutes on the clock, so I guess if he's trying to put pressure on the kid and play quickly, that that part of the plan is working, but... Something tells me this attack is, is not going to be as good for White as it looks. Yes, I'm also a little bit puzzled if it can get through. E takes f5, knight takes f5, all right. So you have a knight on f5, but the knight alone will not do any right. miracles. Yeah, knights alone can't conduct checkmate attacks. Like, that's a fact. That's not even just, like, yeah. random Danny <laughs> reference. That's actually, knights alone cannot conduct checkmate attacks. Although, you, knights can deliver smothered mates. I like bishop g5 because black is aiming to trade pieces. So the more, pra the more pieces he gets to trade, the closer we are for to get into an endgame where those two e-pawns, the double d-pawns, will be really yep. vulnerable. Well, okay, whoa, though. We have got to go back to what happened whoa. here in this game between... Look at, look at the current position here. <gasps> Jeez, what happened? Uh, yeah, no, let's back up and see what happens. So Sargisian may be recognizing that he, uh, he has to be all in at this point because he doesn't want to be positionally worse. Decides to take d4, go full lolly gambit up in it's this. A I haven't seen this. Sec. This th I haven't seen a king on e3 like this since uh, the fried liver was popular. Indeed, this, this is, is a crazy. Reverse fried liver, but it's two pieces up for white. Can't be enough, especially because it feels like white's pieces are already well coordinated for defense. This bishop is guarding e8, um, but okay, bishop g4. 
So what you're saying here is if trade, trade, and the king, okay, don't mate yourself, right? King back, you're going to win the a4 bishop. Now black is only down a piece, and this king is permanently a problem. So Fabi says, yep, I see you. I'm not going to go for that. I'll play queen d2. I'm assuming b5 comes to block the e8 square, and then we put a rook on e8. OMG, wow. this, this position. This is, <laughs> I, I really just like the way that Sargeeson's playing it. I, even if it doesn't work out, I feel like if you if you're gonna get a if you're gonna get a nick in the shield, mm. right, of Captain America, yes. right, you can't just stand there. You have to go full swinging, right? And I think that if you, if you get any chances against a 2800 player, it's because you did something like this. Indeed, I agree with you that it's great to see that Sean Sargassian is so bold. He goes all in. It's a double piece sacrifice, yep. getting Fabi's king onto e3. We shall see if it will work out, but so far the attitude is great. Yeah. Fighting spirit. Yeah, and you know, especially in a practical setting like the Pro Chess League, and it, I don't think objectively this can be enough. I'm saying that based on intuition. Oh, and the Whoa. first result and is a victory. And we already have a result. What oh. happened here? Ooh, the queen Proleko has been trapped. got his queen trapped. So he played for this idea of bishop g5. We left him for two seconds, and he got his queen trapped. No. It only took him two seconds to get that queen into queen trouble. Queen to g4 blundered the lady way, way too far from home. And, uh, okay, obviously Proleko resigned, but the point is that we had g4 coming, and if queen g6, knight e7 check. Indeed. So um, we will never get to know what would have happened to the doubled e-pawns, because it right. was not about Those the doubled e-pawns e escape barely, right? Uh, but if, it, honestly, if Proleko had just played queen d8 here, is he doing okay? I guess knight d6 is coming. That That's kind of hmm. a problem, actually, in hindsight, because... The b7 bishop will fall, and after that the d5 pawn falls. But but what you said, Anna, like the point is e f the e pawns are, you know, pawns only a mother could love. They're doubled <laughs> and isolated. They're It's about as bad as they get, right? Yes, I know. So, I mean, I, I agree with you. I feel like we'll never know what could have happened. Perleko got a little bit too aggressive, which sometimes happens to young players. when you, Especially if you if you feel like it's going your way, you're like, okay, like I, I, I calculated this, and I don't think I'm getting checkmated, and just completely blunders Rook F4. Indeed, and I see the chat is getting really high to calling Alexander Botas. The Botas Gambit is on the board indeed. Yes, That's shout right. out to Alexandra for all the amazing interviews that she's conducting here for us at the Folsom Foundry. Let's go back to Benjamin Box game, who is... Uh, has had the bishop pair and, and had good chances here, but look at Ana Sargisian getting getting frisky on the C file here. What happened in this game? What happened here? So she brought the rook to C8 after after Yaz's F3 was played, castled. Now, I don't know. I really liked Although now that I see Rook B6, I think probably Castles was safer. Okay. So the problem is though that the Queen side became a lot more open then maybe Bach was ready to deal with. I mean, I actually, I actually think even if, if Black just takes back on f6, that this is kind of kind of difficult. Unless I'm just overreacting, and is it is it is it not as good as it looks? One crazy line. Okay, it doesn't work. But just to show, if d6 takes, mm -hmm. I thought maybe you could take and play d7. Almost. But you take with check and take here. Oof. But otherwise, this was something to watch out for. So if Black takes back, I think that. Um, Bach will have to play something like. Whoa. There's a check on g3, and that means after maybe bishop now d6? g6. Maybe now d6? Yeah, so d6, rook takes e2, d7. Yeah, I think it works now. Queen a5, queen b8, check, and then d8. Bach did not play it. He goes for bishop d3 with five minutes on the clock. It's a good question by uh, John Davis in the chat, actually. He asked why black couldn't take here. That's a tempo on the queen and then take bishop. The reason why, John, is because queen g3 comes, which not only guards g2, but actually pins the g7 pawn. And so black actually just gets mated. You have to play something like, well, frankly, anything you play, I'm also threatening queen b8 mate. So uh, the reason why that didn't happen there. Thank you, Crazy Coffee Man, for the, for the seven for months. Thank you for subscribing seven months in a row. That right there is why, John, um, the move queen g3 would would not only defend everything for white, but actually win on the spot for white. So, um, okay, so d6 is played, and I like this idea. I, I guess I overreacted when I first saw the position about Ana's second rank control, because that, that d pawn is, is stronger. And the queen is defending the g2 pawn, so this is curtains. 
Yeah, I mean, is it is it over yet? I mean, maybe not immediately. I might have been too harsh, but the d6 pawn. If you look at this boss pawn, yeah, and that black doesn't have counterplay. You can't allow d7, right? I mean, if you play any other move, everybody d7 comes, and then there's threats of queen b8, and so you just can't allow that. So queen d5, I think, was forced. But now the question is, can Bach play rook c1 and try to use the fact that black is so worried about the d-pawn that, you you know, you get active on the open files and, and launch a mating net of some kind. So I'm with you. I think Bach is better. But I, I don't know that it's just over because here, here I'll mm. play devil's advocate. If in time scramble, if anything happens that allows this d-pawn to, to be lost, look at these two, right? Mm -hmm. Black is winning in any rook ending that doesn't involve the d-pawn, right? Dirty dancing here, right? If the d-pawn gets crazy, white wins. If not... I think I think Anna could actually steal this one. Yeah, no, you're right. I I miss the idea of Queen D5 stopping the D pass pawn, and the Queen is well placed on D5, so it's not like that Black had yeah, to go passive in order to stop the D pawn. Now E5. I actually I, I, this this doesn't look like unless I'm just missing something. I don't I don't think I am. It feels like Anna is actually in great shape here. I mean, the D pawn is falling. If you take there's even Rook D1. If I just want to get the rooks off the board. Indeed, I totally missed this queen d5, e5 idea. So kudos to Anna for coming up with this. Yeah. I think he's just turning the tables if this is working. If there's nothing concrete for white in this very moment, then you are right. The d pawn is about to fall. She's opening up the d5 where she's got her rook and queen. And his king is safe. There's only one check yeah. on c8, and then she can go king to g7. Lots of... Uh, Not to the h5, because that oh, would wait, be wait, mating wait. There's too. queen h4 coming. Oh, okay, it's still a mate threat. King g7, queen h4, or queen to h3. Threat okay, I, did, I didn't realize eight. that this was just a straightforward... So, I, and I, I should have, I guess. I was highlighting the rook would come to c8 and the queen would come to the h-file, but I didn't realize it was just mate. It's just mate. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's a problem, actually. I think uh, we, we had a little <laughs> yeah, if, if roller coaster King evaluation yeah, yeah. here with Danny. And, and the main thing is that if you, if you go for everything here, then e4 in the end, Ooh. okay, there may be something else. Actually... Maybe even g4 was made. I don't know. But yeah, white's winning. And f5 doesn't help because of the queen a8 mate immediately. All right. We missed it. Danny? Hey, I'm just testing everybody whether they're <laughs> paying attention. Speaking of paying attention, look at this. Fabiano is... He's going to have to really work his way out of this. This is going to be a crazy finish. Yeah. If black can just keep pieces on the board, the lower time gets, the harder it is to play your king in the center. B4... Fabi's aiming to chase that bishop away. Um, it can still be placed on b6 or a7 to keep the pin on the a7 g1 diagonal, which I'm expecting will happen. And that's yeah. Fabiano on screen, very focused, listening to our playlist. He said that it's a good, it's a cinematographic playlist. Yeah. Sometimes he said it sounds like a movie. Yeah, that's what he a said. movie track. Maybe he's listening to Hans Zimmer and he does not know it. <laughs> I think there are numerous options. Like we said, we have classical music, we have white noise. Um, I, I'm pretty sure Donchenko yesterday in the media, uh, the press conference, said that he'd be preferring the white noise. Um, so uh, Other players prefer classical music, which I was surprised that. Yeah. Actually, it was, I believe, uh, uh, Shunt who said that he likes Mozart. Yeah, that's right. In the, and he uh, wasn't joking. In the Beyond the Board interviews, that's yes. right, yeah. I'm glad somebody watched those. So Alex and th I watched thank it. Thank you for watching those <laughs> interviews. And wow, okay, we have a result. Bach does indeed win. I was I was wrong and, and really went for a ride on this one. Shame on Benjamin Bach for tricking me. It's his fault. But I wondered if there was some, some sort of way that, uh, that Black could have held this. But I guess not. The, the combination of the C file and the H file was too much. And uh, no real way to stop this, stop this attack from coming. Yeah, I don't, I don't see what could have been done to improve the defense. So, shout out shout out to Bach for having having a good a good feel for this position and that Black could not coordinate time because as we were saying, if the deep pawn fell, Black would be fine. But unfortunately, that was not possible if you're rooting for the Eagles there. So, yeah. Bach strikes back. It was a very well played game by the Dutch Grandmaster. From the beginning to the end, he always had the control. Yep. Slightly better position and he kept on improving and eventually it was a decisive advantage. Here we have a game that it looks like Theodoro might be in decent shape to steal a, steal a half point here. The Opsicode Bishops makes you wonder if Zavin will have enough here trying to trade the C for the B. Okay, White's probably only going to win because this king is in danger. There's threats of rookie 8 mm -hmm. but, 
but if there's nothing concrete, then uh, you have to like to block hating chances of the obstacle bishops. Yeah, White couldn't win the bishop immediately, so instead of mo moving back to c4 with the bishop, rook e8 check wasn't winning the piece because of king g7 attacking the white bishop as well, so this is just a rook end game. Absolutely. Now, now after takes, um, note that taking b2 was still possible because now the bishop is guarded, so there is no check, and so Zabin defends the back rank idea. Doesn't want to get mated there. We see him focused focused on uh, on his game. Uh, we see that his teammate next to him already done. The headphones are down. Yeah, that's the board of uh, Hike Martirosian. He has won his game already. Zavan checking on his teammates, of course. When he, whenever the players look up, it's because they can see the projector mm -hmm. with the boards. They don't see our analysis. Luckily for them, they don't see our very profound analysis That's from right. The they board. don't see me claiming victories and losses. <laughs> I was going to say, people always worry about fair play, and I worry about it the other way. If you could even listen to the analysis, there's no way you're not going to be worse for it. So, <laughs> but um, If they listen to our move suggestions, for sure. Yep. There's his opponent, Nicholas Theodoro. One of the I feel like he's right where we Greece. left him. It hasn't moved all, all day. Yeah, he's the man who can't be moved. Yep. Did you just go full script reference? I didn't even see that coming. <laughs> nice. G I've been trained to do this G next five, to you. The pop culture training, right, coming out. Um, okay, G5 is played, and yeah, I mean, this looks this looks like there's definitely drawing chances for black. Um in fact, the fact that the C pawn is is solid, if you could if you could get this bishop dislodged, who knows? I mean, maybe maybe Black isn't the one fighting for a half point. I still I still favor Zavin in all these scenarios. Just looking at the clock, right? Time pressure favors him. He's so experienced at swindles. Gonna take a six now, I think, with the rook. So yeah, I, I think that White is still the man to beat here. But um, but the problem is this: if you take a six, the bishop comes from e5 into d4. Uh -huh. And this is, you know, just really typical of obstacle bishop endings, where it's just so hard to get enough, even if you get a pawn. Sometimes even two pawns, it's just not enough to win. I agree with you. With opposite card bishops on the board, this is still a good chance for a draw, even if Maybe the a5, pawns disappear from the board, as you pointed out. So let's it's a one-point advantage for the Eagles. And let's go back to this Fabiano game where... Sean Sargisian now played bishop to d6. Threatening bishop f4, picking up the queen. Fabio realizes it, plays king to d3, and after d takes e4, of course he wasn't willing to go king takes e4. No, he's king not crazy. He's not king crazy. A king of the hill, he would have won. That's right. I know. That's right. Maybe he got a little confused, right? He almost played the bond cloud in game one. Maybe someone needs to remind Fabio what we're doing here. <laughs> um, just classical chess, Fabio. Yeah. Chill. Chill out, dude. Um, all right, so... Now, from a from a instructional point of view, how do you how do you think about these positions when your king is in danger, your opponent's gone all in with a with a bunch of sacrifices? I think now, Anna, you have to start thinking about how can I give a little bit of material back, but but consolidate, right? How how do you eliminate your opponent's crazy attack by giving by giving up a little bit of the of the material advantage you have? I, I start thinking about moves like bishop b two. And just sacrifice the knight on d4. Right, just sacrifice it with tempo, even if you get the rook to c8. Because you start to find in visualized positions where, look, if I can defend everything, put a knight on e3, a piece is good enough, right? I don't mm -hmm. need two pieces to win. That's true. Um, so that's like how, how I would advise if I was going over games like this for a student. And I'm not even saying that's best, but you have to start thinking that way. Mm -hmm. When your king is potentially in so much danger, you can't be greedy. You have to be willing to part with some of that material in order to coordinate. That's certainly something that Shant, uh, Shant is not. <laughs> Shant has just played C5. I'm <laughs> correcting myself. Fabi has to consider right. what you have mentioned, giving back some material. Because if he simply takes on C5 and tries to hold on to all the yep. material that he has gained, where will he hide his king? So B takes C5, Bishop takes C5, Bishop B2 to defend the D4 knight. A rook can come to the C5, threatening a discover check. Mm -hmm. Bishop B4 check, Bishop takes D4 check. And where do you hide the king if it's right. only king b1? I now you're now you're because and the reason why you don't want to do that, everybody, is because then what you do is you create a scenario of yes, you're up material, but you're permanently down material. With a, when you start trapping your own pieces for for greed, right? And so, mm -hmm. um, again, uh, and there you go. And so Fabi finds a different way to do it, but it's along the same idea I was talking about. Look for opportunities to part with something in order to to coordinate. And this move threatens to take g4, so it's not exactly. <laughs> we can't read, of course, what uh, what 
Grandmaster Benjamin Feingold just said. But that might be your best pun in a long time, Ben, for those reading the chat. Shout out, shout out to that right there. Um, shant out to that. I shan't <laughs> read. I shan't read your, your comment on air, but thanks, Ben, for being here. So Fabi gives up this D4 knight for the G4 bishop. Knight takes G4 with the tempo. Yep. Look at those central pawns of black. Yeah, I... I don't know. So I guess Fabi feels like D3 just not going to be enough. So, but uh, here's another example of what I'm talking about. Maybe just Bishop B2 or even take D4. Uh, don't don't worry about every piece. You just have to coordinate to sort of beat back the Lions. Shant is under a minute on the clock, so I think Fabi just wants to manage his time here, make sure he doesn't beat himself in the next few minutes, and probably is going to defend off this craziness but I, i'm still i'm still very impressed and kind of like mm -hmm. okay this is how the eagles are going to get a point off of the 2800 you got to go after them every game and hope you wear them down um speaking of being worn down though look at this theodoro is taking away zavin's chances one move at a time i think he's defending it's and three uh, points versus three points in an opposite colored bishop end game looking very droish this is this is a, a good a good win here, even though it's a draw for the Archbishops. I think um, Theodoro, you know, speaking of, we talk about getting a nick in the shield of Fabian Caruana. Well, Zavin Andreasian also the board one for the Eagles. So any any point against him, and there you go. It's a half a point for mm -hmm. Theodoro. And uh, got to be making his manager proud. And we're back to the only game remaining here, which if Fabi wins, will bring this thing to a full tie at 4-4 at halftime. Indeed, h3 protecting the g4 knight, but not the rook c8 check. There are only a few options for that king. Where would you go? Danny, where shall that white king go? Where shan't I not go? Where shan't <laughs> where I go? Shan't, is the question. Where shan't you go? I shan't go to d1, because from there I'd be re-putting my king back in the center. Okay, now finally, the, the defensive sacrifice I've been calling for, Fabi. Just give back the knight. Play bishop d b2. Okay, he might play bishop b3 first to coordinate... Get a bishop back on what looks like a nice diagonal. But, um, yeah, he does that. And then, I again, I expect him to just not worry too much about the knight to find uh, optimal defense. Get coordination. Take d4. Put the bishop here. We've got these last two players on camera. It is the only game remaining here in the second round of the second semifinal. Indeed. And after queen g6, there's a threat of e3 winning the queen. So white goes queen takes d4, giving up the g4 knight, as Danny pointed out earlier. And it should be enough, right? The coordination now, the only thing you have to be careful about is don't mate yourself here. Funny line. If h takes g4, don't play bishop b2 because of e3 check. And Beautiful. Bob's your uncle on c2 there. <laughs> so, um, okay. Fabi knows this. He kept that b2 square available. Now I think he can take g4. He can also take e3. The danger is you don't want to allow bishop coming to e5. You, in some cases, you may even tuck your king on a3, worst case scenario. But um, how, do you, how do you deal with this now? Do you? Hmm. Interesting. The king is occupying the square, but you would like to develop the bishop. And mm -hmm. king a3 looks... Uh, dangerous right you, you don't want a5 <laughs> but if you can get the queens off the board i mean even this king being checked up the board is not a problem so okay hmm. I, I i i was just gonna say i look at a line like this bishop of four and i'm not worried about any checks shunned down to 13 seconds against the yep. world number two 10 seconds nine this is it so he's got to find a move six, quickly five four Three? No. Okay. okay, he moves. Heart attack. Bishop yep. seven. Now you can even play rook e one. I think I think rook e one's the move, and you meet bishop bishop f six with the bishop to e five. Okay. Mm -hmm. He goes bishop e five right away. But four seconds left for Shant. It's a two second increment for those of you just joining. There's a two second increment with each and every move the players make, but it's still just very low on time against a world class player that Fabiano is. Yeah, and shout out to Fabiano from the perspective that what he did is uh, he didn't panic on the p sack, right? Mm -hmm. Played quickly, played good moves, um, and uh, that allows him to then defend a, a tricky position uh, without I a lot of time on the clock. I see that on the right side we have the names flipped, so it's uh, Fabiano with the white pieces. Fabiano is white, not Sargisian. And he's got That's three right. minutes. Sargisian, seven seconds left with the black pieces. That's so right. That's Sorry about that, chat. We will, we will fix that. Yes, indeed. Fabiano is white, not black. That's right. And rook h5 is what Fabiano should play. 
Oh, no, he doesn't. Finds another way. Another way, and I think he'll take with the rook, yeah. And that's just a dynamite move. He gave out the bishop because after rook takes f7, he's got mortal threats now. This yep. discovery check, the king has nowhere to go from g8, and all these You even attacks. win the bishop back if you want a simple move like rook f4. True. Actually, rook f4 wins it's everything. winning immediately. Yeah. You have to play rook e6, and you oh, pick up Oh, he, he finds an even beautiful. better move. That's how you put it away. That's how 2800s win chess games. And, and that uh, ties the score, Fabiano Caruana winning in style. Well, we said, would Fabiano uh, winning his games be enough for the Bishops? This round it was, right? After they fell behind two and a half, one and a half, they strike right back with, a, with that exact score of their own. So we are tied at four games apiece. Mm -hmm. And uh, this, you know, are you going to be in, in for another overtime thriller? Is that where this is headed? I hope so. I'm hope hoping so. for a blitz tie break again. If you're just joining us, let me remind you real quick. We'll bring up the bracket and show you who is waiting for the winner of this match in the championship. Well, those are the Snowballs. The mm -hmm. Snowballs won earlier today in amazing overtime fashion over the Shengdu Pandas. They won. It, so it says 8-8 eight, eight right there. Um, but then they actually won in the overtime tiebreaker. Um, it all came down to Georg Meyer and Li Chao. It was super exciting. Shame on you for having missed that match. But we are going on almost seven hours in here, and we still got a couple left because this is the Pro Chess League semifinals. The winner of this match between the Archbishops and the Eagles goes on to play the Snowballs, and round mm. three will be here when we get back. The most elite event in online chess returns with more than $100,000 in prizes, the Speed Chess Championship is bigger and better than ever. As players try to qualify their way in through the women's and juniors field, we take a look ahead and see who's on deck waiting amongst the seated players. Of course, right there at the top, you have defending champion Hikaru Nakamura. He'll face a familiar cast of foes in guys like Jan Napomniachi, Alexander Grishuk, Jan Christoph Duda, and more. But perhaps his biggest challenger will be a brand new player in the field. Currently the world number three and the top chess player from China, Ding Li Ren at 2809 looks to make his SCC debut a memorable one. Look ahead and mark your calendars for November 29th through December 1st where the semifinals and finals will happen. You can follow all the action at twitch.tv slash chess chess.com tv or go to speedchesschampionship.com to stay up to date with all the latest news and info be sure to fill out your fantasy bracket and try to predict who's going to win this year's speed chess championship and we'll see you on chess.com st louis archbishop's manager mike Cummer. there you go mike you were here last year as well how does the event compare uh, I think it's a lot, going a lot better uh, this year. We're off to a much better start than we were uh, last year. And we got uh, the young guns, uh, you know, and they're storming their way to a victory. So far, it's tied 4-4. How do you feel going into the next round? Uh, fantastic. Uh, we'll be uh, favored in five of the next eight matches. So we're right where we want to be. You're very positive today. What's been your favorite part about the event? Uh, Fabiano doing his thing, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a real treat to have him on the team this year. I think you talked a little bit about this earlier, but it's the first time Julian is playing as a part of a team. Can you pick why you decided to have him as a fourth board? You'll see. You'll see. How does San Francisco compare to being in St. Louis where there's a lot more of a chess culture? Yeah, I wish we had an uh, arena like this at, uh, in St. Louis, like a great venue. Um, well, in conjunction with the St. Louis Chess Club, obviously, where we could have a big, uh, big events like this with the eSport atmosphere where people can cheer and have a lot of fun and uh, help themselves to a nice uh, concoction over there, too, and uh, have a lot of fun. What's the hardest thing about being a team manager? Uh, you know, you can't really play. You got to just sit there and you got to just have confidence that uh, you put the right uh, team together and it, so far so good. Would you ever consider playing on one of the teams? Uh, I am the 1998 Missouri Scholastic State Champion, but... That <laughs> <laughs> but I, I peaked, I peaked, I peaked then. It's a young man's sport. 
And before the interview, you were doing a little bit of a victory dance. Can we maybe see that again? <laughs> Just rewind the tape. Back to you guys. The captain of the Archbishops oh with a victory uh, dance. The manager of the St. Louis Archbishops, Mike Cummer, never fails to deliver. Um, and his team delivered last round, so he's got something to celebrate right now. Right? Indeed. They are deadlocked, tied 4 4 piece. And he, you know, uh, Mike is obviously a great interview, he's a lot of fun, but. You know, he puts a lot of planning, and he prepared, and he, mm. he knew exactly where he was at in the match as a team manager. He said, we're fivered, we're fivered, we're favored, and five of the remaining eight games. So it tells mm. you how much thought he's put into this mm. as far as the ratings go, um, and we'll see, obviously, if that pays off. The rating is one thing. Uh, performance in the league is another. But, you know, uh, shout out to Mike for building the team, and we'll see if his, uh, if his bishops can keep it going. Yeah, and let's see how those mice work because it was Mike who bought four mice, right. computer mice, for the team at Best Buy. Now we know right. the most expensive mice from That's Best right. Buy. So, sometimes the most expensive mouse is not the best mouse, as we learned with, with Fabiano. But anyway, no, so obviously Mike is uh, excited for his team and their position now as we head into the third round. Halftime's over here, everybody. We have only two rounds left, and we are deadlocked at 4-4 apiece. So um, that's... Um, that's, that's big news. Obviously, if you were expecting a close match in this rematch of last year's semifinals, then you got what you, what you thought you'd have. Uh, as we said there, Fabiano getting wins in style. Mm -hmm. He needs to keep doing that. Uh, Mike Cummer said, we'll see. Julian Proleka, we, we asked him, and it's been a big talking point. This is the most inexperienced player they've ever had on board for. And, uh, you know, why did he do it? And Mike said, well, you'll see. So we'll see if Julian can, uh, can, can get a victory here. Indeed, and the other victory for the Archbishops this round was by Benjamin Bock in the exchange variation of the Slav yep. defense against Anna Sargisian. And let's talk about where they're going to be playing now. Obviously, the pairings for round three uh, have a, a big matchup there on board one for the Eagles versus board two. I, I think that if you talk about pure chest strength, I think that Bock is probably the stronger player. I mean, obviously, his rating speaks for itself, right? The over-the-board classical rating is one thing, but if you talk about pro chess league strength, the rapid format, right, the uniqueness of this event, I think Zavin is probably the favorite, um, but, but that's, a, that's a big one to watch. That's going to be my match of the round right there, whether, whether or not Bach um, can, can beat Andreasian or vice, whatever happens there I think is huge for the, for the future of this match. What, what's your thoughts on, on your f pick, of, pick of the round for a matchup? I agree with you that that's a key match, and I'm also curious about the Caruana Martirosian matchup. Of course, okay. it's the world number two with the white pieces, but Martirosian, he is the current Armenian champion, one of the best rapid players of his country, and he's still just 18, so who knows what this boy is capable of. Right. I thought you were going to pick on a Sargisian's game. You've been talking about that as your key game every round, right? I and, pick and her every round, well, so I don't this, want people this, to think I always pick her. This might be one of those games here. I don't know. True. I mean, obviously, Nicholas Theodoro, he held a draw with Black against Andreasian, kind of with ease, so that was a, that was a good game for the interna international master there for the archbishops to kind of feel his, feel him, his way through the thing here. But now, now he's got Anna Sargisian, who has played as well as any board four this year. That's going to be a tough one. I'm going to keep my eye on that one as well. So, All right. Well, uh, the games will be getting going very soon. Shout out again to the chat. And shout out to Alexandra Botes, who is in the chat, our fourth member from the broadcast team. And she's been doing an excellent job with the interviews. It's not easy. I know how it is to interview people who sometimes are in the mood, sometimes not so much in the mood to answer right. your questions. And you still need to make a great interview. Absolutely. And, and it's, been, it's been great to get to know some of the people down there on this site. Of course, there's plenty, plenty of others and uh, so many strong players here just hanging out, having a good time. Uh, different chess, chess celebrities, chess streamers. We've seen them just hanging out all day. So if those of you that are active in the chat, I'm pretty sure I saw Goldust Tori in the chat. We saw uh, Christian Carilla, who is Count Live. There, there's a subscriber right there. Thank you so much for your support while we're... Thank you, and thank you for those Hoff emotes. Keep them coming. <laughs> Another one. The subscribers are coming in. Thank you there for the six-month resub. Nelson Moore, appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, well, the, the games are going to be getting underway here in just a moment. Shout out to all of our moderators who've been here all day. Uh, and it has been an all-day thing. It's not just like for you. <laughs> lip service, right? You've been here for hours if you've been here all day. So thank you so much for your work to help this be the best experience possible. And uh, we're getting ready. Checking on the Chess TV chat. Premium member, Magnus CAB. He says, hi, Danny. Hi, Magnus CAB. Hi there. Personal shout out to there you Magnus go. CAD. Magnus CAB, not even sure what that's. Chess Pandy. Chess Pandy has been here all day. Oh, nice. We were talking about Chess Pandy in, uh, earlier. 
Huh? Oh, okay. Got it. Sorry, that was me. Everyone just saw that on camera. It was me, <laughs> Justin, my producer. Yeah, let's bring it up. Let's bring it up. Let's talk a little bit more about the team statistics. <laughs> I forgot <laughs> I was on camera there. Um, so what do you think when you look at this? And, and it, what, what stands out to you in regards I to... I see lots of numbers, and I wish John Roche was here. It's very color-coordinated. <laughs> right now I'm looking at that math, and I'm, you know, I'm trying not to black out here. Uh, but no, jokes aside, I think that <clears throat> you talk about the average ELO of the teams coming in, but then you look at their performance, mm -hmm. right? And one thing that always stands out is how much better the Armenia Eagles seem to do in these team events. Look at that. You've True. got a 25.02 average ELO, mm -hmm. but a 25.71 average performance rating, right? That's I mean, that's, that's, a, that's as big of a jump unless I'm missing math somewhere. I guess the Shangdu Pandas as well, right? 24.92 performing 100 points higher. Actually, that, that's actually the highest mm -hmm. um, uh, performance above rating. Five points above, yes. Yep. But, um, you know, again, the rapid time control, the experience um, in those big pressure-filled moments with, uh, with time ticking away, right? Mouse speed, sometimes critical, along with, along with your calculation speed as a chess player. So it's always curious to see how players come in, what their rating is, and then how they're actually performing. So there you have it. Those are, those are the teams and, uh, and how they've how they perform this year. We, we continue to see subs coming in. We really appreciate Thank it. Thank you so much all for all your support. And one more time, I wanted to give a shout out to our on-site audience, everyone who yeah. came here to see us at the Folsom Foundry to see the matches, the semifinals, and also to see some of the streamers. It's just great to meet people from Twitch, those of you who we see in the chat and recognizing you in person. I love to see that, you know, the actual human being behind the Twitch handles. Yeah, I, I love it. And I think it's one of the things that we, we talk about a lot as far as there's the Twitch community, the chess community, and, you know, you get to know people online and then, you know, you have an event like this, everyone comes out. It's, it's been a ton of fun. And, and thank you, everybody, for being here. Thank you so much. Absolutely. We're, uh, we're buckled in here. I'm ready. I'm I don't ready know. I mean, too. the players aren't ready. We don't care if you're ready, Danny. We're not ready yet. <laughs> I'm, I'm just like sitting here on the edge of my seat, like, yo, yo, game, chess Let's game. Go. Let's here we go. go. It's 4 4. It's a tie with two rounds to go. That's right. And if it's a tie after the next two rounds, we're going to see a blitz tie breaks. I'm actually hoping for it. That's what we saw between the bottom button snowballs and the Changdu pandas. Yep. It would be great to have another tie break. I'm sure you would love to. I'm all for more overtime <laughs> chess. If we push this thing to nine hours on camera, I'll be happy. Shout out to uh, Diamond member AVPS116 chess. Ask for a shout out and you just got a shout out. And, uh, so easy to get shout outs from yeah, you, I mean, Danny. I, I don't, oh. you know, I'm the Oprah of shout outs. I hold nothing <laughs> back. Um, all right. Well, we've got a French here. Fabiano Caruana. I like love it. Hike material sound on Great. Fortunately, it's not the most traditional French, right? This is the nah. classical exchange, not the, not the structure that makes Hannah makes Anna banana, right? It's the Meyer variation of the French defense, I would call it. Yep. All right. Well, um, <coughs> we've got this position here with Queen to D2. White is often preparing for a quick castle's long. Um, so one of the interesting dynamics of this French, maybe you can talk about this. Anna, is what happens when black brings the knight to d5, right? So is white prepared to part with the bishop pair if the knight comes to d5, or what's the plan on this idea? Yes, often white would not mind to give up the e3 bishop if you gain tempi with it. So that is, it's going to take quite some moves for black to capture that bishop. So in the meantime, you are developing your pieces and you take the initiative. So black would end up having the pair of bishops, but lack development. Castle queenside by Fabiano and B5. Yeah. B5 is, um, well, obviously Hike is still playing very quickly, so he, he knows what he's doing. This is going to be exciting because most likely we will end up yeah. seeing an opposite side castling position where both players will just aim at the opponent's yep. king in a very aggressive manner. Not, the, tra not the traditional French that you see, right? And one, one of the ideas for black to kind of avoid that is if black tries to get the move c5 and open things up and, and basically make some trades. Um, but given the way these last few moves gone, I agree. And I think the much more likely thing that happens is black just settles on castles and says, all right, here we go, race time, right? <laughs> Hike is, uh, it is race time. Hike is going to take a moment to really think about that. He knows he's about to get into some crazy chess against a 2,800-plus player. And that's, you know, it's not for the faint of heart. Right, you got to be ready, ready to calculate and feel confident that you know what you're doing. Um, and uh, <clears throat> and okay, well, h4 is one move you can consider queen to d5 in some of these positions. I know that 
okay, the queen could be poked there in the center, but if the king defends, sometimes you can put the knight on e4 immediately. And, um, you know, you're, you're trying to slow down white's attack by putting pieces in the way. And if you can get white to part with the bishop pair, mm -hmm. right, you've got a position where it, I actually would prefer black, right? The light square will be controlled by black, and much less likely you fall prey to a mating attack if, uh, if you get rid of the light square bishop. So... Here we've got Fabiano Caruana's eye tracker for a second, or we did, and we, we went away from that. We'll, uh, we'll see if we, we can keep an eye on Fabiano's eyes here in a moment, for those of keep you wondering. Keep an eye on his eyes. Keep I an like eye it. on his eyes. I'm always, always, always looking to Fabi's eyes, right, when you're having a conversation. <laughs> um, the, uh, the eye tracker has been a huge, a huge hit, I think. This has been a lot of fun. Is that the playlist? Sorry that I interrupted you, but I've just seen the other screen. That's Is that right. the playlist? That's right. Hike, Materiasian, and Fabian Caruana are the first game underway, which means the other players haven't started yet. So they were still sort of browsing through their playlist. But right as we say that, Nicholas Theodoro and Anna Sargisian do get underway. What would you listen to, Danny, if you had to choose? Um, I Again, I mean, you talked about the Disney. Yeah, I mean, that Disney makes me feel good. good. Sometimes choice. I go with a theme, though. Um, you know, I can go with, like, some LCD sound system, which is a little more like, or like... Uh, the XX. Mm -hmm. I like a little bit. It's like it's not quite like house music. There's lyrics in there and different stuff, but it's got rhythm to it. Yeah. And it's something that you can easily zone out. I mean, because jokes aside, I think one of the issues with songs with too many lyrics mm -hmm. is when you get in a full focus mode, they actually start to distract you. Yeah. Right. Where songs that have a little more rhythm to them, mm -hmm. a little more bass to them, or even classical music. Yes. They're um, they're easier, I think, to become sort of white noise when your brain is really focused to zone out. I agree. I would definitely go for instrumental music. Probably Hans Zimmer, fa my favorite okay. choice, or classical music. And Grandmaster Yung, the hammer in the chat. Shout out to the hammer. He's also here at the Fossum Foundry. Unfortunately, the gnomes didn't make it to the finals, but we are happy to see their captain. Hammer comes no matter here. what. And he, I mean, he bought his ticket literally before, like, the moment it was announced. The moment I could confirm to him privately that we'd be in San Francisco, he bought his ticket. So Hammer wasn't going to miss dedication. this. That's whether, dedication. That's dedication. Whether he was coming alone or not. <laughs> Nicholas Theodoro just played the move knight c6, going for a slightly unique approach here in the g3 king's indian um the idea for black to induce the move d5 even at the cost of losing a tempo for the knight is you sort of poke this structure forward and you hope that eventually it opens up other squares that as we said pawns can't move back right and that that creates an opportunity to outmaneuver your opponent on a particular color complex um and uh what we mean by that is a particular color complex, so it's all about the dark squares. And if you feel like your pieces are better suited to control those types of squares, then you can, you can make up, uh, in theory, for lost time. And so the risk of it, of course, is if the pawn on c4 is protected and then these knights just keep getting kicked around, you get in trouble. But I, I, actually, really, I actually don't think Anna knew this line, Anna, because I don't think that... I don't think this is the best version of... I'm, so, I'm trying to remember. I used to mm -hmm. play a g3 King's Indian as white. Again, many, many past lives ago, many moons ago, but um, but something tells me that, that um, this is a little bit awkward for white. You can't really play b3 safely in these positions without there being tactics on the diagonal. Um, so I'm what? oh, never mind, she's going to call my bluff. We'll see if, uh, let's see if Nicholas proves me right and comes up with something tricky to expose the tactics there. We shall see. Luckily for white, there are loads of minor pieces on the long diagonal, so both knights would need to be moved away for a threat on c3. Well, we'll keep our eye on that. Let's go back to the game with Fabiano and Hike because this was the one that we were... One, as you said, it's your pick for the round as far as you think maybe the biggest game. Uh, Bishop d5 instead of queen d5 was played. This was the move I was kind of advocating for. Similar idea to force the king to be won. But now, rather than playing a move 94, I was thinking more about slowing down White's attack. Hike says, you know what, take a hike. Here I come, <laughs> b4, and I'm just going to go all in for an attack. Play c6, he's trying to play queen a5, and, uh, and keep the party going. Yeah, but now after queen g4, black has to deal with the threat of queen takes g7. And if castle king side, is that, is that a move that can be played here? It's so looking scary, right? shaky. Even for a French player like you, used <laughs> to being attacked on the king side, yes. right? This is this looks scary. I'm scared. Yeah. I'm scared. The um, queen g4 move, hitting g7. Okay, you, you could deal with it with bishop f6. Bishop f6, I would prefer over castle king side 
for safety reasons. But but I guess okay. So so he goes for it. I guess the risk of that is that the bishop was so much more ideally placed here mm -hmm. as far as the queen side attack goes. So now you're you're removing the bishop from the ideal diagonal, and so it's it's kind of a mini win for white just in terms of the overall yeah. goals of the position. Um, yes, the bishop guards g7, but but now black's attack is definitely slower, and we're starting to feel like look at the clock. Look at Fabiano's tempo here. He he feels like he knows he knows where this game is headed. This is uh, this is going to be a tough one, I think, for Materiosa. Now the third game is underway. Sean Sargisian versus Julian Proleko, and his manager, tons of confidence in him, said, "You'll see." And uh, let's see if uh, Proleko can can get on the board here. Even with a draw, it would already be a good result. Yeah, we shan't see in this round. We shan't see, <laughs> right? We, we keep making really bad you know, puns, we know. I mean, <laughs> we know, that's you know, why we are we here. We shan't make another pun. <laughs> um, I don't know how that happened. Poor, I mean, darn Ben. Ben in the Twitch chat getting us getting us going with that, with that the, 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 uh, the grandmaster who shan't be named. Um, all right, so D3 is played. White's going to put the knight on E2 and play for F4. Um, that's one idea. But these positions are just really flexible. I always feel good if, if I've got the bishop pair in a center like this because, you know, you've already got some open files. You can play for f4. You can play for d4. feels like white is kind of holding all the cards as far as what direction the game's going to go. We've got Julian on camera here. Very focused. Hopefully has already forgotten about the, the self-queen trap from last round. Oof, the bo The Botez Gambit. Botez Gambit by Julian Proleko. We hope he will not repeat it. Even if he watches Alexandra's streams, it's something that you should not pick up from mm -hmm. Alexandra, just mm -hmm. for your own health. Yep. I think Fabiano's game will be the most exciting in terms of the middle game, since it's this opposite side castling. Or if even Black will castle, we shall see if um, in the game of Fabiano versus Mikitarian, mm, a.k.a. Hyde Martirosian, right. maybe he won't castle. Will he keep his king in the center, or will he castle king's side, Black? H5, that's a, it's a very committal move. It makes sense to try to slow down your opponent's kingside assault and probably hike plans to follow with something like G6. But the risk of moving all these pawns, and again, the uh, captain obviously can't go back, but they also become targets, targets to different tactics. So, example, the queen retreats, and you play G6 to try to stop F5. Just as a note, white is kind of threatening to punch F5 mm -hmm. in. If you play G6, you have to start considering something here, right? I mean, I, whether it's knight takes or bishop takes or I don't know, right? Shake and bake? I don't know. I mean, there, <laughs> there's got to be something that, that that black is afraid of here. So um, so we'll see. He plays h5. Fabi taking a think. You know, I wonder, is he is he thinking that Hike's just going to steal the pawn? Because he, he committed this rook here. That's true. So and if I, the queen moves, uh, he could have taken. No, he couldn't take an h4 before because the exactly. g7 pawn was hanging. So, so now I wonder the queen if Fabi leaves. feels like maybe he blundered. I mean, is he? Somehow I doubt it. It feels like h5 should not work, and you could even play queen g3 here, Anna. Yes. And kind of gambit h4 for g7 if you just want an exchange. Oh wait. Oh, uh, but that would lead to checkmate. Oof. I, my, I was testing you. you you're uh, doing your yeah. puzzle rush. Good job. Um, <laughs> okay, but Fabi goes queen h3 instead, and. And this even makes sense. You're, you know, the H-pawn can't be the most important feature of this position if you take it and white plays F5, right? Hmm. I mean, come on. As a French player, come on. Who do you uh, like here? Oh, white. Oh, uh, I know. I know, This right? is a pain. It's Black's pa position is collapsing. It's painful. All right. So G6 is played. Um, we've, uh, we're getting some refills here, which is good. We'll, we'll have some more T-shirts oh, here. Those nice. of you just joining the chat, we have a T-shirt t-shirt gun here on site and Anna told me actually at the last break that she is interested in shooting the gun. I want to shoot um, one t-shirt. That's right. So uh, don't go anywhere. You want to see Aunt Anna Anna use the t-shirt cannon. And because you were you were the co-host with me when we started talking about the t-shirt yes. cannon and that's not something they have in European sports apparently. No. I remember that I didn't even know what you are talking about. Yeah. It's not in my vocabulary. Right. A t-shirt gun. I couldn't imagine what right. that is. Right. There you go. So there you go. You're going to be you know shooting a t-shirt gun here and, and take that home to European sports there. Maybe next time we hold one of these things and over there it'll be it'll be even better. So I will uh, return to Europe as a true American. A I've true, been to Barry's boot American. camp workout. Now I'm going to use the t-shirt gun. I feel like an American already. Now we've got some shots in the crowd there. There's a, the a nervous manager, the captain, Artak Manukian, along with um, 
I believe. Uh, the wife of Zevin Andreasian. Zevin yeah. Andreasian's wife right there. And a, and a fan all the way from Armenia who's wearing a flag. I mean, yes. that's team spirit. It is right? team spirit. That's the whole crew of the Armenian Eagles. Yeah. Artak said that he would rather Ar Artak play. knows he's on camera. He's, I'm he going to get a smile out of that guy. Come on, Artak. Give me the smile. I knew it. Yeah, there you are. We love you, buddy. Member of the parliament. It's not just the captain. But he's the member of the parliament yeah, in Armenia. Is. Yeah, Shout is. out to Artak Manukian. He has brought loads of souvenirs with him. I've got a box of chocolate, Armenian chocolate. We've got our own mugs. Yeah. You One got more chocolate? Time. I didn't get any of that. Oh, well. I think he just likes you better. I'm going to go on a limb and say he likes you better. So I, <laughs> I didn't get any gifts this year. So Ooh. anyway. All right. A game we haven't looked at yet. Bach and Andreasian. Speaking of big games, this was kind of, from my view, the, the most critical game of the round. I think that Bach is a big pickup for the St. Louis Archbishops. If it goes to tiebreaker, I think they'll be better uh, better off than they were in previous years. And, um, you know, he's a very strong player who, as we keep saying, had just didn't get a lot of play this season because normally St. Louis was able to field the Fabiano Caruana Wesley So two-headed mm -hmm. monster. Yes. Um, but that doesn't that shouldn't take anything away from how good Bach is and compared to other league board two. So Andreas and Castles, he's uh, he's staring down, staring down the B7 pawn, saying I'm not even worried about it. Apparently our Mubot is dead. Oh, we should take a two-second silence R for Mubot. Rest in peace. Yeah. We'll work on that. But uh, if you're with us and looking to use your commands, sorry about that. We'll get back to the chat here in just a moment. But uh, thank you for being with us. And following the Pro Chess League. So, Castles, let's analyze this. What's going on on Queen B7? Just I quickly assume it's it's probably not good, I guess, because I trust Grandmasters like Andreasian when they, when they don't defend pawns. But... But I don't know. I mean, it actually, it actually looks, looks okay. I mean, let's see what Benjamin is thinking about right now. If we bring him up on camera. So we've got the blue ghost on screen. Uh, we are missing our back rank, though, from we're the board. Our, oh, we're missing our back rank of the board. Yeah. But we can imagine what's we there. We can imagine we what's can there. Imagine we can actually it. see what's there to <laughs> yes. the left of it. But sorry about that. We'll, we'll fix because. our capture, everybody. But yeah. uh, knight to c3 played. You see Bach is looking at the b7 pawn, right? So we can clearly see that he's he's thinking about it. Also calculating different forms of the captures on, on d5. And but let, let's come back to the eye tracker once we have the, the full board in sight. So, all right. Let's, um, let's move on to the game, the first one we started with. I'm really interested in this one between Caruana and Hike Materialsian. Um... Hike does not take the pawn on h4. That's good. Mm -hmm. He backs up. Mm, yeah, instead he's pushing his pawns on the queen side, going yep. for the kill against the back, the black, uh, the white king on b1, I was going to say. Uh, the black king is still in the middle of the board. Which king will be more vulnerable? That is the question. Bishop to c1, that's for safety purposes, but also it opens up the e5 for the e1 rook. And there can be a sacrifice on f7 or g6. Knight takes g6 is an option. f takes g6, bishop yep. takes g6. I'm starting to like it. I'm starting to like the sack, and I think Fabi is too. That's why he backed up the bishop to c1 and uh, keeping an eye on the potential of a sacrifice on g6. I also get worried about the bishop on d5, okay? It's not really an option now, but... Watch out for tactics where somehow this pawn goes to c4. Just a real quick example, I was going to say the reason you would normally like in a position like this, Anna, you'd love to play b3 mm -hmm. to try to blow things open over here and get an attack, but you might immediately fail to c4, and suddenly the bishop is trapped. It is trapped right? in the middle of the board. Right. A very unique way to get trapped, but be, being aware of the potential problem there. Black plays a3 instead, and now I think the bishop will be forever safe. Not Probably not going to get trapped anymore, so... Um, a nice move by Hike, and we'll keep an eye on it. But let's go back to the game between Benjamin Bach and Zavin Chess Mood. Knight to c3 was played. He didn't take b7. And uh, we saw he was thinking a lot, looking a lot at the b7 tactic, and he may go back to it. Now we've got it back on the board. and The eye tracker, the blue ghost, that is where Benjamin Bach is looking while calculating this position. I think at some point we're going to need an emote for the eye tracker here, just like a little blue dot. Yeah. You know, I mean that's like we'll just we'll get an emote for maybe tomorrow a little blue eye tracker because this is this is this is eye tracker hype. I really love seeing this and I and love I, it. I've never seen anything like this. 
not just in chess, but in general, an eye yep. tracker. I'm not familiar with this tool and how it works, but I'm really happy to see that we've got it. We've got this. Some of the players are being tracked. Every single round, a different player we try to pick, unless it's Fabiano Caruana, because yep. we just love to see Deffert, where he was. Deffert in the chat looking. says, I feel like there's a lot to learn from eye tracking these games. I hope someone makes a video to really analyze these. Well, you can clip anything yourself, of course. Make a clip if you're watching, or uh, just check out the VOD later. But this is a video as a live show, and I think it's... Look at the oh, blue I see dots. What he's, probably there's, an educational. There's a blue dot already. Look, someone What's already made an there? emote. Oh, no, they found some sort of font. But we'll okay. make an actual blue emote dot for later. But I see what you're saying, Defford. Yeah, maybe some sort of instructional video on YouTube actually breaking down what it is they're thinking about. It's interesting. And I think right now it's very clear that White just has an eye on the tension, right, of D5 and C4. Um... And uh, part of the reason for that is if you ever take B7, now black can take, and there's a discovery, right? You'd actually like to build on the tension positionally anyway, because if black takes it, eventually you have a better center. Mm -hmm. Although here I think what Bach is realizing is maybe he doesn't really want to allow this in the traditional sense, because if takes on D5 and then black immediately puts a piece on D5, yep. he may be able to really hold down the light squares in the center, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's why he's so focused there. Yes, clearly his attention is in the center, whether there should be a trade or not. And if he will take on b7. Yeah, and there's also knight e5. Um, I'm not sure how much he's looking at knight e5, but if knight e5 takes g2, takes, and takes here, I think instead of taking c4, Anna, you take b7 now, maybe? Mm -hmm. Maybe? Maybe not. The queen can come to d5, and this might actually just be fine for black. Some he's sort of transition. c4 pawn, yes. Okay, well, I mean, let's, let's, so he, he eventually decides he is going to take, and notice, wow, look at this. The eyes are focused, and so is the mouse. Really not sure whether he wants to take on d5 or not. He's calculating the, about the c takes d5 variation so much, or knight e5 to mm -hmm. trade that bishop from e4 and then try to grab the b7 pawn. Well, you know pawn. what I'm realizing is he's actually, I think he's looking at takes, because the point is if you take with the pawn, now you cut off your own bishop and we can take b7 safely. Makes oh, sense. Look at that, he just checked on his, his musical playlist and that changed our caption, that was hilarious. Oh. So we had we had Bach on the, uh, we had the, uh, the eye tracker is literally coming from his screen. We're not observing it in any way. Yeah. So he goes and checks his musical playlist. Uh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was awesome. Uh, not your fault, Spencer. Shout out. Shout out to our producer back there. Not your fault, dude. That was awesome. Um, the uh, bishop takes in C4. And uh, I like what I like what Bach did there, Anna, because he's, he's going to get the big safe center. He can defend d4 with bishop e2, even bishop e3 or e3, and I think white has a small edge. I think so too. It's more space in the center, and this e4 bishop will not stay there forever. So he, white is likely to trade that bishop soon, and then the b7 pawn will be hanging one more time. Black will have to deal with that. Un unfortunately, speaking of things that may be over soon, Ooh. it looks like Julian Proleko may... Maybe maybe falling down here because the the dark squares are exposed, and there's no going back. No, this is game over with this f6 monster. That bishop on f6, that is killing the black king side, queen h6, and then queen g7. It's not possible to defend against this mate. Yeah, I. I are you seeing any moves? I think it's just no, over. No, it's yeah. just over. Yeah, I'm uh, saying that the queen will get to yeah, g7 and, and it's over. I guess we caught the resignation on camera. And, and uh, it's handshake We have the time. first decisive result of the second half of this match. And it all kind of started here where I think Perleko just didn't maybe appreciate how dangerous this attack potentially was coming on the king side of, with f4. Plays b5 and then on f4 got to play something a little different than bishop e6, whether that's taking f4, um, even trying for something like d5. Uh, okay, that wouldn't work, I guess, because you're, you're, you're watching out for forks. But the point is, as soon as the board became split and white was able to just focus on the dark squares, this is the result, right? And uh, just nothing nothing that, that Pro Lego can do to stop mate, and so indeed he resigned. Let's check on Honest Argesian's game. We haven't looked at that in a while mm -hmm. against Nicholas Theodoro. Um... This is a dynamic one, and I, I like her position. Look at this. I mean, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Seems like she's got an edge in terms of space, and the bishop on g2 definitely better than the black counterpart. Real issue is the double, the double time on the clock that black has here. 
Yes, that's the only problem I can see about white. Opposite side castling and she has pushed g4, f4, so it's a promising position with the queen on b2 looking at the long diagonal. As you pointed out, the g2 bishop is very active, more active than the ca bishop. She's got the semi-open d5 for her rook. It's looking great. All she needs to do is develop the g1 knight as well and speed up. Speeding up would be great here. Yeah, she needs to speed up. I, I like knight c3 partly because she recognized, hey, I took this knight on a journey. I wanted something over here, but recognize now that the dark squares have been exposed with one of black's last moves of g6, I'm going to relocate this knight for a more promising future here. And I, I think it takes maturity sometimes to recognize and back up, although as Whoa. I say that, the B5. Enduro says, uh, I'm all in now that you've wasted that tempi. It can be taken with the knight or it can be taken with the pawn in both cases. This is yep. a pawn sacrifice in order to open up the queen's side. That's where black is aiming to attack and just gain some speed for his development. Yeah, what's he going to do on takes though? Is it is it d5? Is this like sort of a Blumenfeld gambit where you sacrifice the queen side for the center, d5 and d4? Or is he, or is he just going to play queen a5 and, and try to slow play it, right? Knight c7, try to win the pawn back this way. That's another idea. He's got both options and also a6 in the future. Queen a5, a6, or a6 immediately. So he can try to open up the b5 by giving up that pawn. Got to be honest, though, I don't really buy it. I mean, the thing I like about black's position the most, again, is the clock. I feel like h4 and h5, opening the h file for a long-distance relationship mm -hmm. over here on <laughs> h8. I mean, this, I mean... I just don't really buy that this is a great position for black. I think even knight f3 and knight g5, and if white sort of does the mm -hmm. same thing and says, I'll, I'll, I'll go all in on the attack too. I agree with you. It doesn't look like black's attack is justified. It's only the b5 and the queen coming to a5, but black is lacking pieces. He goes for d5, so that's something he couldn't do earlier with the pawn on c4. She immediately plays e3. I wonder if that's a little too defensive, but again, watch out for tactics here because... Um, Okay, you, you can't do it yet, but again, there's all kinds of tactics on d5. You have to be aware of the potential dangers here. And just to show how we laugh in the face of danger, let's say I play h4, and you take, and I push h5, and you push, and I go here. I take advantage of the pin, and who's, who's winning now, right? Who's on the yeah. attack? I'm taking g6. I'm playing knight g5. So the more we just calculate forcing lines, I, I don't like what she's doing. I don't think she recognizes how dangerous her attack could be here. Like, I don't even think any move on the queen side is necessary. I think h4 and h5 is is the key. I agree with you that this attack by black, it doesn't seem to be strong enough. h4, h5, that's two moves. In two moves, white can open up the h5, and with the queen on b2, that's mm -hmm. already a, an extremely dangerous attack. I don't see how black is going to stop that, or how can he speed up his own attack. Queen a5. Queen a5. This is, this is going to be a really exciting one. I, I want to check on the other ones. Five in a car won his game with uh, Hike Materials on his moved along. Seems like one that Fabi's going to get, putting a rook on g1 and bringing the queen into a6. Yes, what do, what do I think? agree with you. h5, h5 also because looks pretty good. he doesn't want to allow that pawn to be captured. And that's a pass pawn. Um, we have learned from yep. Grandmaster Yasser Saravan that pawns... Yep. Pass bones need to be pushed. Push him, baby. Push him, baby. Your wizard, Harry. Right there. They're right there. Harry the H pawn. Okay. Oh, look who we have in the audience. Shout out to Gotham Chess. Levy International Rosman. Master Levy Shout Roseman. Right where we're, hey, he's right where I left Yay. him last night. Hasn't moved an inch. Right there at the bar. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> we got right. loads of streamers here, familiar faces from the chess community, and Levy, of course, has been doing an amazing job covering chess.com events. He's been part of our crew with the Pro Chess That's League. Right. His highlight shows have been one of our, my favorites. I thought you were talking about his hair highlights when you said highlights. His highlights on his <laughs> head are good, of and course, his highlight shows are the good. The hair but highlights as well, and he has done an, a wonderful job covering the Granka tournament That's as right. well, where Fabi competed just a few weeks ago. There he is. And uh, Wingardium, Levy Rosman, the emotes come out. We got a lot of subscribers to the Gotham Chess channel, as there should be, letting their emote soul glow in the in the chess chat. I love the wizard one, the yep. Harry Potter style Gotham Chess. Yep. Well, after uh, Bishop to e3, I think that Fabi is defending everything that matters, and it's just a matter of time before he works his way in. I mean, there's threats of Rook g6, mm -hmm. e6 is falling. There's threats of Queen a6, c6 is falling. I think uh, this is going to be a tough one, and the clock says it all, right? Hike under a minute. 
Fabi rocking a five-minute advantage, um, and uh, I think this is going to be a tough one for Hike. So, all right, we'll, we'll keep our eye on if it gets closer to a result, but the, again, back to the game between Bach and Andreasian. What happened here where we left it, right? So, indeed, after the move, uh, Bishop B2, this is kind of what we thought. Bach decides to go for the exchange, and it makes sense. White just has a comfortable edge in this type of position mm -hmm. with a big center. Right, if black just sits, then it only gets worse, right? White just yeah. gets more space. He knows how to use it. You can't just sit, so you got to react and try to poke at it. But now d5 is the consequence of that, and white has a pass pawn. So very typical, right? Uh, and uh, I, I really like the way Bach is playing, and this is the kind of thing they, they hired him to do, right? Because um, he if he can start getting wins here, especially against the top board of the Eagles, mm -hmm. Right? I mean, that would be exactly what you wanted. And now he's got to be thinking about knight g5. Is that potentially on the board? You can't defend with a knight to f6. Yes, after knight g5, black would have to play g6. g6 but but that the dark three is squares open. Are, I mean, yeah. Ooh, if that's I had a knight so tracker ugly. on, it'd be going like this right now. Something like this. And queen c3 threatening right? mate on a j. My eye tracker is going nuts here. I don't even know. I mean, uh, I don't know. Knight g5 looks really scary, right? It does look scary. So this is Benjamin Bock with the white pieces for yep. the Archbishops. Currently, it's a point up for the Eagles, but if Bock gets a win against board one of the Eagles, that could change the entire match, the dynamic of the match. Yep. Especially because it looks like uh, Hike as the board two for the Eagles will not will not return the favor. He will go down to Fabian Caruana here. I think we're moments away. Something like Rook takes E6 looks like it's coming. Also would be pretty good. You could probably trade and then and then get B4. Okay, Fabi blinks a simple approach. 11 Fine. seconds left for Hike. Queen to B5, and then he has Queen B8. I think we're actually going to see a resignation Six, here. Queen five, B5 was a great move four, by Fabi. Four, two, That's 2,800 one. chess, Holmes. Queen can come to D7, and he just wins the queen on, on H7. There is no mate. Rook G1, Bishop C1. I, I think Black just runs out. Yeah, Fabi just double checks, makes sure that he doesn't believe there's mate. Hike resigns, and Fabiano Caruana is helping to lead the Archbishops. Well, resigning with a smile. That's the spirit. You're facing hey, the world at, number look at his, two. Look at his. Uh, he he knows what he's here to do. He wins, but he's focused on the team. Fabi stands yeah. up and immediately looks at how his teammates are doing. And we're back to taking a look through the eyes of Benjamin Bach, who's, oh, and he goes for it. I've been calling for it. My eye tracker's there too, buddy. <laughs> Knight g5 and queen c3. He's looking at variations that involve, uh, well, a any sort of method for black to try to block the open file. But I think, I think there's some lines like this he's looking at, where you have queen c3, f6, knight here, and queen here. You can unpin the knight, and immediately this is impossible to deal with. Um... There's, I don't know, There's, it looks very dangerous, bishop to g7, the, but the point is the pawn is still pinned, so I, I, I thought maybe I could even play for something like this. It, it feels like white is an accurate maneuver away from having a, a very dangerous kingside attack, and I feel like Bach's rapid eye movement is getting is getting rapider. Yes, he's calculating real fast. Knight g5, queen c3, all sorts of, a combination of those oh, moves. wait a second. Is he looking at something with rook d5? Really? Could be, actually. Okay, he goes for a g5, but looking at the d5 square, looking at the d5 square and ideas where the rook swings over to the king side, that's just something I only started looking at because I saw the I saw the eye tracker hit d5 a whole lot. The queen can also come to d5 if you play mm -hmm. queen e4, queen d5, but if yeah, does he have the time for it, though? Note that something like queen e4 also threatens the ideas of knight takes h7 in a quick switch. True, so queen e4 with the double threat of queen d5 and queen h4 or knight takes h7, multiple threats. Yep. That might be what he's calculating. Looking at the blue ghost. Wow. This is a super, super crazy position here. I, I like the move queen, queen e4. e4. He and goes it's on for the board. it. Three minutes left for Benjamin Bock, but he may just be winning already if yep. his calculation works out well. Multiple threats here, as we mentioned. Queen to d5 is one of them. Queen h4 is another option. Knight takes h7 is also in there. Plus queen d4, because the long diagonal is still really vulnerable. Yeah, you know what's a threat on the board right here, just winning on the spot? It's just queen d5. And how do you stop f7? Like you yeah, literally you can't. can't. You can't guard it. I'm looking at moves like queen to c5 to at least stop queen d5, but, but I don't really d, buy it. Yeah, rook d5 is coming too. In, in fact, it's, it's, it's amazing. Then knight takes h7 and rook like h5. Exactly. 
Well, you're saying it before Basel I can Rosh. say it. I was going to show it, and you said it. I'm you know, sorry, I'm right. trying to show off it, as no, well. No, you did. You did awesome. No, exactly. This is this is a position that puzzle rush algorithms are made to find, because even if the human doesn't find it, you know the uh, the tactic is probably there. It, it looks super super dangerous. You can smell blood in the water. Yes. All right. So what's the only other game going in this round? It looks like Anna Sargisian is. Defending an attack, but up the exchange. So what happened here? Oh. Back up a few moves. A6 was played. I was skeptical of Nicholas Theodoro's attack. and I'm, Yes. But I don't really like the way Anna did. I mean, she went full defensive mode mm -hmm. instead of H4, H5. But, okay, she, she decided she wanted the material and finds her own tactical shot. Wow. Nice. This game got crazy. She but wins in the, the end, exchange. No, she's actually, there's actually two pieces for the oh, rook. Oh, I did not see that. So where did she... Okay, I lost track on where did I, I she did, give she up this piece. She sacrificed a piece. It was All my right. fault. I, I said she was up the exchange when I first okay. came here, but I was wrong. And and I actually think that that she's going to go down here. This is this is, this is is looking super dangerous. I mean, you can take B3 check and then find a safe square for the queen. White's king is in much more danger than black's now. Mm -hmm. So I, I just really think this one started to unravel if we go back here. I think that there was a... Just not realizing how potentially dangerous that White's attack was, she she started to say, "All right, I'll take the material and defend rather than go all in." And sometimes a strong player, when they sense their worst, will do that. They'll they'll try to take advantage of the nerves, right? Her, she just backed up, and so he's like, he's kind of like, call, he's kind of bluffing, right? He's yes. going all in here and saying, "You know, I'm I'm going to bring the pressure," and and she sort of takes the bait and goes into defensive mode, and then it becomes all about Black's attack here, and uh, and now. But now even if objectively it, this wasn't good for Black, I think this is what he had to do since his position was inferior yeah. and Anna's no, attack was, was very I easy. Agree. She was outplaying him and, and, yes. and he was much worse. And so, so I guess he gets credit for finding the practical yes. approach and, and sometimes that's what you have to do even if it's objectively not the best. Well, what's going on here with that king on d3? Rook di check, king e3. Feels like it's moments away from... Uh, from mate. From a mate for Black, yeah. Um, Keeping an eye on the game between Bach and Andreasen, there has not been a move yet from Zavin, so don't worry everybody, we're not missing anything. We're staying right here where the action is, Nicholas Theodoro trying to find a way to take advantage of that king on e3. You don't just want to give a check on g3, everybody, because then you unpin the knight. Right now the knight is actually pinned mm -hmm. to the queen on b2. So, so uh, not Bach, excuse me. Theodore is trying to be patient. You don't just want to give a spike check. You want to find the really accurate move here. Knight d4 is an idea with knight c2 coming knight in. Knight d4, ooh, I like that. Knight d4, knight c2. In fact, I love that. Knight I, d4 I think that, that also threatens queen yep. e2, mate. You're saying all your time. How much puzzle rush are you doing these days? I love puzzle rush, but, but I can't do it. I promise to do it only on stream. Highlight. Yeah, the, uh, okay. oh, he goes for this. Really? Maybe he has a move follow-up that's just forcing. Is it bishop c4 and rook d3? Is it knight d4? I think he probably calculated a forcing win, and he's he's a stone-cold killer over there. Very calm. Well, knight d4 I wish we could see his eye movement. Look at him. His, eyes are, his eyes are darting, Flickering. darting all over the board. Okay, he played knight f to d6, and now queen f2. Oh, but knight this, to c3 is lights this out. This is lights out, yes. Curtains, knight c3 yep. check. In fact... You might even be able to play b2 because if takes you t you get a new queen and you may beautiful made. queen takes yeah. f4 simply also good enough so Theodoro does what he's supposed to do gets a victory over the board for Anna Sargisian six to five in favor of the archbishops trying to take a revenge on the reigning champions. They are up by a game, and if Bach does what we think he might do, you can tell Zavin is nervous because he went from having a seven-minute uh, time situation on the clock to now being officially lower than his opponent. So um, that's not a good sign as far as time management. We know Zavin is a very fast player, a very confident player. So when he's going into a think, it's because there's something to think about. Yes, we really don't see a defense for Black. We have Queen already D5 mentioned is the so threats. simple yes. and strong. Just, it just hurts. I know. You I mean, can't. You can't even play a power move like c3. You're thinking, you know, b2 and c2, mm -hmm. just queen d5. Lights out. But then I still have queen to c4. Do you? Ah, okay. You so found the square. E you e found the e square e for Even me. that yeah. is, you know, very bad, right? Now we have the d pawn in 94, but you're right. Okay, so it's not just mate there. Um. What else could Zavin come up with here? This is, a, I mean, this is a huge moment. This we we keep talking about the fact they're trying to mm -hmm. seek revenge. Well, they might be 
delivering on that promise to, to exact their revenge here in San Francisco because they're up they're about to go up two games into the last round of Which play. Which is huge. huge. It will mean that two point lead and they would only need a point and a half from the last four games if Benjamin yep. Buck wins this game. One point and a half, knowing that Fabi is one of your players. Yep. Wow. This is um this is this is a tough moment right here. Bach has gotta be feeling the pressure because he knows if he gets this win, then uh He's putting his team in a great position. Uh, not not an impossible comeback. We've seen we've actually seen many teams come back from bigger bigger deficits, but um, but not that often. Usually the team leading is also in better form, and so this is a bad sign right now for the Eagles. True, we are seeing the same line that we have mentioned. So after Queen to D5, like has to go Queen C4. I think we'll see a trade and takes, and honestly, I think White uh, it's just very simple. The Rook's coming to B7. The D6 pawn is a monster. Yeah. I'm still threatening ideas of bringing my knight to e4. We're back to checking out box eye tracker along with the players on camera. How awesome is this? Beautiful. Can we just appreciate how awesome this is as chess fans? I love it. I love it. And we can see the crowd behind them as yep. well, behind Zavin and Drassian. The Armenian team obviously worried because this is a key moment. Zavin and Drassian has to survive this game somehow. Yep, he has to escape. It's almost match over. Not quite, but I mean, this is a... We've seen him swindle better and worse in the Pro Chess League, right? I mean, he's very good when the gloves come off, and it's a time scramble. So this game is not over, but how fascinating is this? We get to see our players up close and personal as fans in the crowd. We get to see what their what their eyes are doing. I mean, this is I'm like sitting here. I'm not even going to do arrows over here because I am like a fan right now watching yeah, the eye I'm tracker. The this same. is freaking awesome. I'm a fan of the Blue Ghost. The Blue Ghost, Casper. Yeah. We've... Uh, He's hitting F7. What's he think? I'm, I'm like literally, on the, I'm like a kid in a candy store right now. I'm like, I know. I'm like, he's going to pre-move. He's trading D6 for B5. He kind of just chose the simple. Like, I, I, I got to admit, I'm a little disappointed. I think this is a bit of a practical win for Zabin. We are the fireworks. Because, exactly, right? It felt like we were a moment away from fireworks for Bach. And he's still playing for two results. He's the only one who can win. But even a draw here, really, yeah. I mean, a one-point deficit, not nearly as bad as two if Zabin can hold a draw. I agree with you. So he's going for this end game where he can pick up the b5 pawn as well. It's going to be a pawn up for white, but it's not that simple. Yeah, he's he's thinking he's thinking fast. Bach, more than any grandmaster this level I've seen, like makes moves with his pieces and takes them back. Right? Have we seen anybody else do that consistently? Not really. I, I think it's it's more of a nervous habit than it is anything that helps. Right? He's just. You know, not exactly sure. He knows that he's... Um, There's a lot of oh, pressure on oh, him. And he yeah. only played six games in the Pro Chess League, so he's not that used to it. All right, and he's about to get under a minute. This is... I'm getting nervous here if I'm if I'm a St. Louis fan because I feel like there, we were moments away from what looked like a puzzle rush kind of finish. We're headed into an endgame where, yes, surely White is better here, but under a minute on the clock here is, uh, is nerve-wracking. He's about to get the f7 pawn as well with these double rooks and the seventh rank which is great of let, course so what if bishop what happens here if bishop c5 rook takes f7 you're just getting mated right so you can't you yeah, can't you allow can't this play rook f8 he has to zavin has to come up with some way to deal with f7 and maybe that's it maybe as calm as as uh, bach is maybe that's why maybe he just knew the seventh rank was too much wow is this is this it Andreasen getting under 30 seconds. Uh, he's he doesn't sh shaking his head. He's frustrated. He doesn't see. He doesn't see how to deal with the mate. Here's what's coming, everybody. If you take f7, any move uh, is just the the knight will defend the rook on f7, and we'll get checkmate on the eighth rank. So there's a devastating mating net threatened on the board, and he takes takes a2. Bach is going to take f7. And how does he want to defend this yeah, position? Yes. Now watch for things like knight e4, knight f6, and then mate on h7. It, this is this is. I don't think there's a way. At 14 seconds left for Zavin Andresian. Board one of the Eagles going down. I think so. I, I don't see how he gets out of it. There's two ways to Six, get to F6. Five. Either, either road works. 94. No, that's that's just mate now. He just gave Rook G7. That's the line I just gave. Rook F7 Indeed, and Rook mate. G8. He just gave the, the line that we talked about. And, and he, he resigns. And Bach set. gets it's a, a huge win for victory. Bach. You hear the crowd going absolutely crazy here as the Archbishops put themselves in position to exact revenge on the reigning Pro Chess League champions. They are up two games heading into the last round of play, and wow, do we have drama.
Wow. It that was awesome. Unbelievable. Amazing. Two I points. Was, I was sitting here like with you. I'm like looking at the bar <laughs> of the eye tracker. Boss, I'm like, yes. what is he thinking about? I can't. <laughs> it's amazing. That was awesome. It was. And now this two-point lead will mean that the Archbishops are going into the final round. They only need a point and a half in order to make it to the finals and play against the bottom button snowballs. That's right. Well, the reigning champions are are such for a reason right they've they've had big comebacks these guys know how to play under pressure um and i i said to start the matchup here between them that they needed a lead they needed performances like this from bach and fabiano why because i think Anna sargisian is the heavy favorite against julian perlenko in the yeah. last round i think that that's a that's that's a game the eagles are supposed to get mm -hmm. so if that happens then you know they need two out of three right yep. we just saw it happen in the previous match, if you're just joining us, the, uh, the snowballs were up by a game, then they were down by a game, and we ultimately went to overtime. So obviously it can't happen. I think that the Eagles, if anybody can do it, they can. They're in a position with some of the matchups, and uh, we're going to find out what happens in the final round of games when we return. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Official Random Chess, a game where creativity is king and memorization impossible. 960 different back rank configurations turn the world's best chess players into mere competitors trying to outwit and outclass each other with every unprepared move. Only one will be worthy of the title, Official Random Chess Champion, but the best part is that champion could be you. The Fisher Random Chess Championship will be unlike any tournament ever held. With a global qualification system, for the first time ever, everybody truly has a chance to prove themselves the best player in the world at a chess variant. Are you a chess artist worthy of the 11th World Champion's admiration? We're going to find out. The tournament features open qualifiers beginning on April 28th and the title player qualifier stage beginning in June. Over $300,000 Fabiano Caruana, Hikaru Nakamura, and world champion Magnus Carlsen await you at the later stages. The Fisher Random Chess Championship title is there for the taking. Will you make a run at it? Go to frchess.com today to register, and stay tuned to chess.com for all the latest news and updates regarding this historic event. It's the FIDE World Fisher Random Chess Championship, organized by Dune AS and chess.com. I'm here with National Master Artak Manukian and Team Manager of the Armenia Eagles. Artak, you guys are going into the last round, 5-7. to seven. What advice do you have to your team? So it's a all-in situation, so and much depends whether Zaven can at least top Caruana or no, because this is very important for the impact of the match. And what do you think his chances are of being able to take down Caruana? Mm. At least there is there are chances. So if, whether if I will say 50 percent, 60 percent, it's a guess. But um, I, I am more than sure that my team will do the best to try to, um, I mean, fight for the match championship. Are you nervous seeing them go into this last round? I'm nervous because, uh, especially on a board four, we could get uh, from positions much better scores. But uh, uh, as I told, the, the most important fight for a board four is uh, the last round when he or she should defeat the, um, his or her opponent. Having come here a second year, how do you find the event so far? Last year, year it was much easier because we, in fact, at this time we already became a finalist. So this year we are struggling. But basically, uh, if you will, uh, we are fighting versus the world number two, Fabiano Caruana, and uh, this is the tremendous asset for St. Louis team. And our team is much more uh, equally equipped. And see if Zaven can stop. Fabiano Carona. So we are putting a lot of efforts that this game will be decisive. Thank you. Going back to Anna and Danny in the booth. Well, there you have it. The manager, the man behind the Armenia Eagles. You can tell our talk, as he said. He's nervous. He's like, a, he's like a papa on the sideline here, right? And as he pointed out, last year at about this time, 
I don't think they had it clinched going into the last round, but he's not wrong. I think it was almost reversed. They were up a couple games, right? So this is a different spot. They've never really been down like this in the semifinal environment here live, so surely he's nervous. Yes, uh, the situation is that the Archbishops only need a point and a half to make it to the finals, and that includes Fabiano Carano facing Zavin Andresian. Andresian will have to at least make a draw in that game if they want to have chances. Yeah, no, you've got to you've got to slow down the Fabi train, like he said, right? You've got to, even if you can't stop the Fabi, you got to contain the Fabi. <laughs> So he's got to he's got to do what he can there, and then as I as I said, I, I think that their board four is a favorite. Mm -hmm. So I mean, if anybody is is looking at this like like this thing is is, is a foregone conclusion, I I just completely beg to differ. I think that Hike Materiasan uh, is a, is a much more even matchup there for Benjamin Bach on board two. Yep. Um, in a time scramble, I think Hike is super dangerous. Uh, if if Zavin can hold his own, and and you see Anna Sargisian do what I think she's supposed to do. We love you too. <laughs> we love you I too. Want, I think they want a T-shirt, Anna. You want you want to shoot the gun? I think people the want some more T-shirts. The fans want. That was for the T-shirts. Do this. All right. All right. Be careful. I'm gonna do it. Be careful. I've, you can do I've it. I've been wanting find, to do this on air so badly. Find your find your favorite what fan. <laughs> there you go. You're holding it um, alone now. I was hoping you last time. There you go. Who wants that T-shirt so the badly? Hat, maybe. Yeah. I like hats. You like hats. I love hats. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Oh my god, Oh, it's the not safety's on. Hold on, I put the safety on. That was for your safety. <laughs> that was, that was See that? Smart. You just passed the test. That was safety smart. Safety first. Okay, now it's not on. Oh, oh, you overshot him to I'm Simon. Sorry. I'm sorry. Simon, you work for chess.com. Simon, you, you can't, can't have it. Simon, no. Oh, classic I tried, Simon. I tried. <laughs> Shooting that stuff. All right, well, that was a lot of fun. The players are getting set to have a lot of fun, I think. <laughs> Not as much fun as we're having the t-shirt gun, <laughs> but they're having a good time. You got your t-shirt gun. It. It's a we great pro it. chess league. The pro chess league now has a t-shirt gun forevermore, and don't you forget it. Um, we've got results here showing exactly how we got into this position, everybody. If you happen to be just tuning in, obviously the archbishops are leading by two games, and it starts right there at the top. Benjamin Bach and Fabiano led the way last round, um, and uh, Nicholas Theodoro. Also, also did good. As I said, I feel like Anna really had that one. I feel like there was a, yeah. uh, you got to give Theodore credit for sensing the tempo of the game. He saw the knight c3 retreat, and he basically, I think he bluffed his way to that victory. You give him credit for opening the queen side, and I think Anna had that. But, all right, let's talk about what's on the table right now, because the pairings have, uh, have uh, all we need to know about where this is headed. I, I really do. I, I feel like Sargisian, he's been the best international master, taking nothing away from Nicholas Theodoro, mm -hmm. Anna, who's, one of the highest rated IMs on the planet, but I feel like Sargeesian in this format, Hike, I mean, this is this is going to be a dogfight down to the very end, and uh, I can't wait. I agree with you that Sargeesian has a good chance. He's been performing extremely well in the entire Pro Chess League. Marty Rossian versus Bok, that's another game that can go either way. And Andreas, and I feel like if he holds Fabiano, if he holds the world number two, then the Eagles have chances because of board four and a Sargassian being heavily overrated in terms of that matchup against Julian Proleko, yep. who hasn't played the game before the final. So he's here in the semifinals representing the Archbishops, but he did not play a single game in the Pro Chess League. The captain of the Archbishop said that we will see yep. why he's well, here. So let's see. Now we'll time. see. Now we'll see, right? Now is the time. If, if, uh, if we're ever going to see not last game of the year, Dan, right? Can't hold anything back now. These guys know it. Nicholas Theodoro knows it. We see that uh, sexy looking looking name on that shirt there. Anna Sargisian getting ready to zone in. Doesn't want to put on the headphones until she absolutely has to. Fabi's just digging them. Whatever whatever music he's got going on, he Fabi is it. right at home. He's, he's comfy. He's in here. the zone. Fabi happy. If Fabi's happy, we are happy. Board two, Hike Materiasan versus Benjamin Bach. And uh, we see them playing very quickly out of the gates. It I'm a little, I'm, I'm a little suspicious that they both prepared this. Maybe they kind of knew they were going to get this against each other. Probably, since the players knew the pairings way yep. in advance, I'm sure that they have looked at yep. the repertoire of they both every have single player. More than more than 15 minutes, and and you're right, Anna, because this year they knew the pairings. If those who followed last year know that we did random pairings at the last second, so a little bit of a different approach this year. The teams that had the best record in the battle royales actually confirmed themselves as the top seeds, and so. These teams knew. These teams have known they were going to play each other for really since the the first week of April. Yes, well, that's lots of time for preparation yep. over a month. Yep. 
Sending good vibes to the Eagles, says Mar uh, Mariavelli. And uh, we've got, uh, you, you can use your Eagles emote there. You don't Indeed, have to. You or your Archbishop's Eagles. Yeah, That's you don't, you don't Alexander's have to use emote, a the Nuggy emote. Tell us in the chat which team are you rooting for. Will the Eagles make a comeback? Will the, the Archbishops taking a revenge? They said earlier both teams were a little bit trash talking. They had a friendly, yeah. friendly banter between the two teams. Zavin Andresian said that we want to repeat the same. We will, be, we will beat these guys for St. Louis mm -hmm. and then the Chinese guys. That's what they did last year. <laughs> he said that they're going to repeat it. Then the team captain of the Archbishops came back, Michael Moore, saying, we got to knock those guys out. That's why we are here. So that That's was a dialogue between the two teams and at I, the interviews. Uh, I, I, you know, I don't count out Armenia yet. They're down two, but this is, uh, this is a place they've been here before. As far as the team goes, you're right. We've had new players, obviously, everyone besides Andreasian playing in their first ever live finals for the Pro Chess League. But, um, but they play a lot online. They're comfortable in this setting. And I actually like Hike's position here as white. I think he should quickly play A3, maybe. Um, okay, you have to, I guess, watch out for C5. Is that already coming and I'm not realizing it? Maybe, maybe it is. So if Knight A6 is is stronger than I thought, and c5 is coming on the board. It totally changes the pawn structure when black doesn't have to sit here with a passive bishop, right? c5 just liberates the whole position if you can get away with it tactically. And um, Okay, how, how does that go? c5 takes, 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 go full Hikaru, takes, 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 <laughs> takes, takes, takes. Can we get those Hikaru emotes in the chat as well? Shout out to Grandmaster Hikaru, who's not Some, here, Sometimes if you actually count up the takes he says, he just says one too many, where you know he's just saying it for the fans. Ooh. Like, there weren't that many takes on the board, Did Hikaru. you catch him doing it's that? It's not takes, 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 takes. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So we've got A3. I think C5 is, is possible, though, for, for Bach. Takes jokes aside. Um because of this inner mizzo here. Note you would not go for this variation if you had to take with the queen, obviously, the bishop hangs, nor would you want to take with the pawn, then you have a positional weakness for the rest of the game. So so I, I think if you can if you can take a three inner mizzo, there's the takes emotes coming out. Beautiful. Then I think Bach can get away with it. So we'll see if he agrees or if he plays the more the more preparatory move, rook to c eight. He's thinking about it. And his teammates are getting ready to see. He's also using a paper him. clip on his lip. I mean that's Oh. That's self-deprecation, You don't that's need to do that to an yourself. interesting technique. Yeah. What, what was that? I don't know. Oh, he goes. There we go. Okay, I, I agree. I think C5 was the right time. Um, and uh, already looks like black is equalizing. And you have to be careful of your hike because if you don't handle this transition well, you may end up in a good minor piece for black, maybe a less than, than good minor piece for white in the sense that the bishop in a pawn structure that's kind of wide open and active on both sides of the board kind of has to favor the long mm -hmm. range piece here. So, got to be careful. A trade on c5, knight takes c5. If there's nothing concrete, then it will mean that black has managed to equalize and he's got the pair of bishops at the moment. Shout out to Chess Bay who delivers a message for Hikaru says he's taken off for five minutes heading to the Ivory Coast. Good luck to Hikaru in the Grand Chess Tour. Keep the good 2019 alive and he says have fun and takes, takes, takes. Takes, 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 there takes. Shout out to Grandmaster, Hik Grandmaster Hikaru one more time. He played in the Pro Chess League. Unfortunately, his team did not make it to the semifinals. But of course, he is a beloved member of the chess community, the top chess streamer and make sure to give him a follow if you haven't done it yet. That's right. We have one more game that just got underway. That's Julian Perlenko versus Anna Sargisian. The, uh, in many ways, uh, just as big at this point as anything. I think Sargisian being the big favorite has got to be feeling a lot of pressure. Um, but and, but and to Anna's credit, I mean, she's played well today. I mean, I remember she was she was playing well earlier uh, in game one, mm -hmm. and uh, eventually, you know, obviously got kind of just out attacked by Fabiana Caruana. But it, it was an exchange sack. It was very dynamic. And you called it then. You said, you know, maybe she'll get in shape and feel good. And then I really think she outplayed Theodoro through the majority of that game until he until he pushed the envelope on the queen side. So, um, so you know, she she needs to get this one here. Yes, and shout out to Chaz Bay, Max, and all the mods for taking on the role of Mubot as well as uh, he's taking a day off. Mubot decided so that much, Saturday yeah, is a day off, but we have great mods. Mubot's been breaking for a lot of people lately. It's been a weird... Anyway, sorry. Uh, I know whoever runs Mubot, obviously watching a chess show, so they're waiting yes, for feedback, yeah. so there you go. Um, all right, Knight F3 comes 
on the board. It guards H2 and supports protection of the E5 square. So, all right, Perleko, who, um, you know, is obviously an underdog in every game he's going to play today, but he knew that coming in. Just getting one win, right? I mean, if anything would clinch the Archbishop's victory, it would be a win by Proleko over Honest Argesian. So That would be match over. Yep, he's, he's got to be psyched at, at the opportunity to deliver a, a huge game. So th this pawn structure is, uh, okay, it's a sort of reversed minority attack from a Queen's Gambit, a Karo Khan, and, and one of the ideas here for White is if you can play something like Rook to E1 and then stick the Knight on E5, just to give an example, we'll show some moves as Black tries to prepare the Queen's side. The point is this transition can be very dangerous for Black. You can never take with the Knight. That would be a fork emote. Hmm. And yeah, even your fork emotes out. That's right, get your fork emotes out. Even if you take here, there's moves like bishop f4. And what happens for white is you sort of split the board in this pawn structure by closing it up so that now you can quickly play queen g4, rook g3, right? You, you keep the attack going on the king side. So this is the idea for white here. Black wants the, the opposite. He wants to keep the center open, and he wants to play for things like rook b8, b5, and b4. I keep saying he, sorry, I'm... Uh, subconsciously there. Obviously, she wants to play for b5 and b4 mm -hmm. and get a positional weakness to attack on the c file. h6. What do you think? I actually... I don't know. A I prophylactic like move, clearly. For sure. Against bishop g5 and knight g5 ideas. I don't really... Was it needed? That's think the question. I think it was needed, yeah. I mean, I would... I would be more in line to just play the way the position is supposed to be played, looking to be a little more aggressive on the minority attack. But maybe she's, you know what I'm realizing, Anna, maybe maybe she just feels more nervous about the speed she could compete in the race. Because if, if White's already getting 95, she's she's actually several moves away from getting b5. Because even if you play rook b8, mm -hmm. you still got the battery of the queen and the bishop, right? Yes. So maybe, maybe she's just, yeah, that prophylactic move, like you said, maybe she's just a little more mm -hmm. nervous about the attack. Yeah, she's taking her time. And now she goes 97. She's not in a hurry with costling. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I think it makes sense if you think you're going to lose the race, then don't commit to the process, right? Kind of like, you know, keep one, one foot in the water, right? Mm -hmm. don't, don't dive in. And, and what I'm saying, everybody, is notice she hasn't committed to this. So there is always the outside possibility of this. There's also the possibility that you deal with, you deal with what's happening in the center in a more flexible way. And then you castle short and get back to your typical minority attack. Um, we call it a minority attack because we have two pawns versus three. So less minority. And, and if you can achieve an attack, what ends up happening is that pawn you were missing, that open file, becomes very effective. So I actually like the way she's played this. I mean, I, I like the h6, knight d7 maneuver here. And that she's keeping it flexible. Yep. h6 can be useful too if she castles queenside and g5 will come yep. next thanks to this bomb push. So that, it's a smart mover there. Yep. I like it. Yeah, me too. No, the more I look at it, the more I feel like she has the, she has the right thread here and she'll pull on it. And uh, okay, now we've got... Theodore versus Sargissian. You really couldn't ask for a bigger matchup between international masters here, True. right? I know that us IMs don't matter as much as GMs when it comes to these matches. But these are two IMs who have just performed so well, and this is a... I don't know who's the favorite in this game. I, I feel like it's Shant Sargisian. Mm -hmm. um, but this is... Uh, a, this, this could decide the match easily. So it has been a four knights game with this bishop b5 variation. Gives up the pair of bishops. So black has got the pair of bishops, but yeah. white is ahead in development and has a better control of the center. Both sides just playing super quickly. Look at look at Theodoro with more time than he started with. Yeah, he's, he's collecting time. He's doing his Hikaru Nakamura impersonation. <laughs> Somebody tell him he doesn't have to finish the game with more than 15 minutes on the clock. Not required. Although it would be awesome. I mean, he thinks he gets extra, <laughs> sp extra square, es look at extra he's, points he's, for that. He's going for it. I, I mean, that would be awesome. Thank you so much, everyone, for subscribing. We sometimes do get those notifications also on screen, but it's a little bit difficult to catch up with all of you. So if we have missed your subscription or donation, we do appreciate it, and we are sorry that we couldn't read it out. Absolutely. Queen to d3, and again, you're just playing very, very fast, very comfortable and confident. You like that. Mm -hmm. And I think he knows he's playing one of the faster players, so Nicholas just anticipating the need to stay up on the clock here. Back to the game that we started with between Materiasian and Bach. Um, looks good for Bach, I guess. Um, you know, he's 
open the position. I, I, I kind of highlighted that in that change, this bishop would be, you know, a really key minor piece on the board, and I, and I really like this for black. Yeah, now the only question is what's going to happen to this knight. He has to retreat. Where shall that knight go? Knight d3 is the only jump forward, but that knight doesn't have a way to to stay on d3. You can't protect it with a pawn, so um, after a move like rook d1, what do you do with the knight? Yeah, good point. Um, I, I think from a match strategy point of view, the disappointing thing about looking at this, if you're Artok Manukin, for example, the manager we interviewed is, we're gonna be gonna be hard for Hike to win this game. Yes. Against a strong GM. That's the problem. Like Bach and okay, if the knight moves you highlighted the D file, but Black also has the threat of B five. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the knight is actually pin emote to the queen on C two. So this is um Yeah, this is uh this is gonna be a tough one for Materiasion to win. And ooh, wow. Barclays, he goes in, so we are missing something. I thought that rook d1, there's a pin on the c5. Oh, so that's what he's threatening, is knight b2. Yeah, but rook d1, knight b2, I'll take on d8 with a check, and then I can take your knight. Right, and you win the piece. So that's why I don't understand why knight d3 is actually working. Is I, this maybe working? it's b5. Okay, b5. Same idea we've been highlighting. Mm -hmm. No, that makes sense, yes. There has to be a tactical motive, otherwise black cannot go knight d3. And I've been sitting here waiting for the last game to get underway, and I just got my hero notification on the phone. I love those. The uh, Now we know that Fabiano Caruana is playing, and so we go check out the game. There we go. Bishop to c4. d3, a Joko piano. h6. Wow. Wow. And, and quickly. Yeah. This is this prep. 100% prep. Fabi busting out the big guns. Not even a t-shirt gun, but still big guns. And uh, and we've got the eye tracker on Fabiano Caruana, the world number two here with the black pieces, going for G5. G this is, this is going to be awesome. For those of you that are ambitious chess players and happen to play this system, pay attention because I don't believe that anything is being held back here. This is... This is going to be something directly from Fabi's kitchen, right next to the milk and the eggs. <laughs> this is this is this is cooked up at home, and uh, I, I can't wait to see how this goes. It's kind of a typical idea to 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 play this h6 g5 stuff these days. It um, something you see in the two knights and the four knights actually. Mm -hmm. um, while they're while they're playing and we're fo we're following Fabi's eyes, we'll show kind of a, a typical variation that can happen actually. Where this sort of idea, if you haven't seen it before, in these in a four knights with bishop b5, bishop d6, sometimes you see both sides play for this sort of flexible h3 and h6, with one side kind of looking to extend here and then quickly castle long. Not your classical double king pawn game you saw the masters of old play, but so this idea has become more and more of a modern one in, with, with computer preparation as, as we've let engines influence the way we play these positions, we now say, you know what, I can keep the king in the center, it's a semi-closed game, right, meaning it's closed now even if it doesn't stay that way, but it's semi-closed and, and that allows me the opportunity to get kind of frisky on the king side, so queen e7, black's going to play bishop e6, and so if you've never seen this kind of ultra-aggressive idea, you're like, hey, Danny, he's breaking chess principles. This is, <laughs> this is right out of computer preparation for a modern-day uh, world elite grandmaster. We are being asked in the chat if we could flip the board so that it would match the eye tracker board as well. Can we flip our board on the we left side? We can do side? that, but the chat asks for a lot of things. You know, I mean, <laughs> this you guys, time I think you they guys are already right. get a lot. I, mean, I like we'll, to we'll have flip it, it as long way. as we're looking at it from Fabi's view. Yes, that's what we are doing now. But otherwise, I wouldn't have done it. <laughs> Just so you know, chap. Um, a6, stopping white from pushing a6, expanding further on the queen side. So uh, Fab is taking his time, yeah, yep. he, he can also make prophylactic moves on the queen side. Shout out to Zavin, going for a plan with knight g3, knight f5. I'm, I'm expecting Fabi to maybe try to stop that with h4. In fact, looking at the eye tracker, he, he agrees. His eyes agree, his mouse agrees, his move agrees. I, I already really like Fabi's position. I think this is almost unfair for Zavin if he's he's like, hey dude, like keep your preparation for Magnus and like, you know, the other guys. Like I don't know, this is this is gonna be a really, really aggressive approach here by Carwana. Well he was asked at the interview, the media day we had yesterday, uh -huh. if he had a novelty and it would benefit his teammates, would he give it to his teammates to help the St. Louis Archbishops? And what did he say? 
No. I, okay, I didn't know. I, I, I didn't see the interview, so I was on the edge of my seat there. Well, he said that he, he may need it himself. Right. No, it makes sense. And these guys are the highest level of chess professional. And, you know, all of us get to be jealous while they study chess for a living. Actually, they have other people study chess for them. They're seconds, right? Oh, so and look who is in the chat when you mention his preparation and his seconds. Shout out to Grandmaster Kirilla. And if this... Danny Christian, thinks this is actually Cr preparation. Cr Cr Christian, it is prep, and you just didn't know you weren't there on that one. It, that was a me and Bobby hangout session. No, I'm Ooh. kidding. No, it, uh, okay, well, Christian's a second. He doesn't think so, but I don't believe a word a second says. That's, that's what chess is. So, I, uh, I, think, I think Bobby's playing very fast and very confidently, even if it's not exact prep. This is a position he obviously feels comfortable enough to be really aggressive and uh, play quickly. So, all right, we'll keep an eye on this one. Let's go look at the game we started with because Hike Materiason hasn't moved since 93, and he's down to three and a half minutes. What in the world? He's calculating, obviously, these complex lines with the pins, rook d1, b5, and how can he get out of it? It's not that simple. If you want to move the queen away, that would be such... So oh, queen b3 was an but option, but, but he goes bishop b2. Now b2 comes back. Well, the c4 knight is protected. Perhaps that's his reasoning. So after bishop e2, knight b2, at least the knight is not in the air. Yeah. But still, I mean, this just feels like a position black is already in two-result territory. And even though it may simplify an obstacle bishops, the fact that white has already opened the king, like, don't think this is just going to be your harmless obstacle bishop ending, mm -hmm. right? If you play knight b2 and trade, I mean, black is the only one who can potentially get dangerous attacking chances because of this exposed king. So um, I really like box position, like that he's up on time, and I really like knight b2. I think the obstacle bishop position is, is going to be better than we think. Let's go back to the one that, wow, has changed a lot. Ooh, yes, it has. Rook e6, about to double rooks on d5 with this e3 vulnerable pawn that makes perfect sense. And also the rook can swing over to the king's side on the 6th rank, rook g6. Plus this rook is also taking on some defensive role, protecting the c6 mm -hmm. backward pawn. That's a great point. Yeah, I, li I like Ana's position. Um, I liked the approach she took here back with knight d7 when we left this one. And... Okay, interesting from Julian, he decides to try to take advantage of it by, by changing the structure. But the risk, whenever you go against the flow of your pawn chain, you're always making some sort of weakness. And c4 just isolates the d4 pawn. Um, so black now has a target on d4. Relocates the pieces back to the center, and, and she makes this trade. And All right, as you said, rook e6 is... But both sides have sort of the same idea in mind, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to double rooks that guard my weakness. I'm going to double rooks that guard my weakness, right? At the same time, I feel like Anna also has the upper hand because of the bishop. So in this position, I do feel that the black bishop is superior to the white knight. The knight doesn't have an outpost. It would love to jump to e5, but there's the square that's under the control of the bishop. So it's a more active piece, a more active minor piece for black. Yeah, and the fact that the pawns are also stuck on dark squares, okay, they're, they're close to the king protecting them, but that's something you got to keep in mind, right, is the fact mm -hmm. that this bishop could be a very useful and irritating piece. Even if e3 gets defended, d4 might be stuck on a dark square long term. So um, Anna is bringing the heat on the e-file here, and Julian really has to prove his worth here because this actually looks like... I don't think you can stop me from taking it. Wow, he plays 95 rather quickly. I... I wonder if maybe there was a different dynamic way to try to defend trade e3 for c6 somehow, but but maybe not. I mean, maybe just you just can't afford anything that opens up access like this. So, okay. He plays 95, and again, I think this is right where the Eagles want to be. So we've been talking about the match. And the Whoa. first score is a draw between Martirosian and Bok. Okay, so right where we left it, the obstacle bishop ending happened, but Bok decided it wasn't even worth trying to keep the queens on the board or to take advantage of the open king because given that they're already up two games, a draw gets them one point away. Only they one are, point. They are literally a single win, and one of the people you rely on getting those victories, Fabiano Caruana, is in a position that you're claiming is prep, not prep, but I like it for black either way. This looks, uh, this looks really dangerous. Shall e we have e a look at this from coming. black's perspective? If we have... Uh, when we, if we have the eye tracker up, we will. Yeah. 
I think we will soon have a look at the blue ghost one more time. I, I like E4 this. opening up the E5 makes perfect sense when your opponent's king is in the middle of the board. You want to open up the position. Yeah, this I like is, this. This is so dangerous. Okay, so Zavin has his work cut out for him. Honest Argesian looks, looks good. What about the third matchup? Theodoro and Sean Sargisian. I mean, Theodoro has just played really fast from start to finish. Feels like he knows this position. Two knights versus the pair of bishops. An interesting position. And what's going to happen after the multiple trades? If c takes d5, knight takes d5, that knight will be extremely comfortable on d5. That's a monster attacking d7 bishop. Mm -hmm. And the other knight will come to e4. That would be a dream position with two knights. Yeah, it doesn't get much better than that. Um, okay, bishop g5 is trading e4 for e3, assuming Sargisian takes it, he does. But now d6 is falling. Yes, how do we protect it? The b7, pole is in, uh, the b7 pawn is in the air, the d6 pawn as well. It just looks good for White. And and Theodoro, whether it was preparation or not, I mean, I, I don't know if they would reveal that, but he feels, he, he seems to have known what he was doing as well, right? I mean, just given the speed of the game, if we go through uh, the time on the clock and how quickly he he got this position here, I, I think he, you, you can see that Sean plays this 94 line in the database. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's unreasonable yeah. to think that Theodoro would be ready for it. And at this point, he still had more than 15 minutes on the clock. And it just went right confidently for a position with the unbalance of the knight versus the bishops. A rook lift, and I feel like positionally, white has the upper hand due to the, the weakness that's left on the board on d6. Bishops are dangerous, but they're not easily winning. NM Joseph Schulsen in the chess TV chat. He likes black, but I don't, I don't think so. I think there's just too many other problems in the position here for black. The bishop here may not be the main storyline on the board, so... Yeah, but more of the hanging pawns, knight yeah. takes d6 with the tempo, the b7 ball is sti still in the air. Black will have to prove what he has for the lack of material, losing yeah. these pawns. Completely agree. All right, so, wow. Oh, look That's at that king. That's the first thing, wow. Look at that king on c2. How did it get there? Let's find out, <laughs> right. <laughs> find out next time. The mm. king on c2, how did it get there? <laughs> He walked it there himself. E4, king d2, king c2. 95 is just really, really straightforward chess right now by Caruana. Zavin is on the run, right? The king has his shoes on. And uh, a king trying to run across the board is like when you're in a dream and you're trying to run and you mm -hmm. can't move your legs. Oh. You know, you ever had dreams like that? Yes. Like you're trying to run as fast as you can. I can't move my <laughs> legs. That's how it feels to run your king across the middle of the board because it never goes as fast as you hope it would. The uh, runs up and run in the chat. Runs up and run. Yeah, this is. Um, I've had way too many of those dreams. I'm always being chased by a wild dog. Okay, also. A wild dog. Therapy. Topic Are you afraid later. of dogs? I not really. Mm. But okay, well, again, that's therapy for later. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, so the king is just slower than he'd like to be. Fabiano threatening to undermine the protection of the bishop on d3. And you know what else bishop d7 threatens? b5. Beautiful. Because now the rook is protected. Mm -hmm. I actually really like that threat, and I think Zavin is going to have some trouble. Look at Fabi leaning in. I think we lost the eye tracker, which is why it's not up, because he's... I just got a nod from he's my producer back there. He's too close to the Spencer. screen. Yeah, he's too close to the screen. He leaned above. Oh, oh we're oh, back no, with we the blue ghost. Let's flip we'll, the board. We'll flip the board to see it from Fabi's view. He's hitting C4 with his eyes. Oh, now he's leaned in too far. That's what happened. <laughs> it's okay. We'll keep it here for a second, see if he comes back to us. The, uh, the rook comes to G1. It makes sense with an immediate threat of bishop H6. Mm -hmm. Right? The bishop and Fabi was looking at the E5 knight. Yeah, I, I'm predicting the the best move is is to move the king, but then queen h5. So I'm predicting wrong. Yeah, you can't go for <laughs> that. You gotta you gotta find some way to do something more forcing. Yeah, the good thing is that after bishop h6, he still has rook f7 if he needs to right. protect the bishop. So it's yeah, not good that point. bad. Yeah, yeah. Well, what's what's the best way to continue here? Is black? It's not that clear cut. Hmm. Yeah, what do you think uh, he'll go it's a for? good point that bishop h6 isn't really a threat. You're right. 
This is clearly a critical moment. Fabio still has nine and a half minutes, so he can spend quite some time here to come up with the best continuation. Mm -hmm. and, and he's such an intense player, leaning in. Unfortunately, that means we don't have the eye tracker, but, you know, that's life. And uh, yeah. he's, uh, these guys, if you don't think chess is a, is a physical sport, I mean, they are just, like, on the edge of their seat, pushing themselves to calculate as deeply as they can. And... Uh, this, these are positions where Fabi can really thrive if he can come up with a forcing line. Might also be looking at knight f3 right now. I don't know. Um, something very forcing since black is a pawn down. So he has to go for something concrete in the next few moves. He can't just sit and wait for an endgame. Speaking of endgames, it looks like this will be a really good one for Ana. It's a major piece endgame and uh, all kinds of attacks against the king, the white king to go with it. Threats mm. of queen f1 check. Um, oh, and the audience. Audience getting a little loud down there. Not sure what's going Let's on. Let's see. B5 is on the board for Fabi. That could have been B5 by Fabiano after Rook G1. Wow. Okay, so that was a move I was expecting as an idea of Bishop to D7, but um, did not know that he would just go for it. He does, B5. I guess, as you said, Bishop H6 was not as big of a threat as you would like as, as Zavin. Now he goes for a line that... Saves the bishop in terms of retreating this diagonal, but has committed the bishop pair to black in return. Um, and, in fact, is f2 falling here? Hmm. Uh, someone just yelled, that's my boy, Fabi. That's right. <laughs> I love the spirit. That's like kind of what every chess player ever wants. You're like sitting there working hard, playing. You want someone to walk in and just be like, that's my boy! <laughs> That's my boy, Blue. This should Whoa. be two. He's going to take F2. They're getting really excited They're about their really position. Excited. They're getting really something down there. I think it might be time to close the bar. Seventh <laughs> inning. Right? Time for the, the last call. <laughs> All right. So, Anna Sargisian is on the prowl. Julian saves the day for now with Queen G3, but still feels like Black should have enough to convert this. Um... And uh, back to the other game we haven't looked at in a while. That is Nicholas Theodoro, um, who di did open the position, actually. It looks like the bishops could be very dangerous. You just, you just have to find a way to save that the knights are falling, though, and you're up a few pawns if you're white. Um, and it can also lead into a rook end game if black takes on c3, the bishop is captured on d7. Oh, no, wait a second. Bishop takes c3. What's that line about? Bishop takes, pawn takes. Yeah, now both the d7 bishop and the knight on a5 are yeah. hanging. And I was thinking what happens after the captures. But the d5 pawn will hang in the end as well, so it doesn't matter that black can pick yeah. up the a4 pawn. The most likely result is probably a draw, and, and that's really not bad, I guess, if you're the bishops. Let's go back to the game with Fabiano. Wow. And uh, if we can have the eye tracker, we will. Otherwise, we will just analyze it because it seems like one of the most exciting games left. Rook F7. Wow. If you're just joining us, this is this is uh, this could be it right here. You are a full one full point away from the archbishops punching their ticket back to the finals, a place they have not been since 2017 when they won it all. True. So um, this is they are they are going to have to dethrone the reigning champion Armenia Eagles to do it. But Fabiano Caruana, the uh, may have been the the ingredient they were missing last year. Right now. Quite possibly. Look at this move, f4. f4, and if knight takes e4, bishop f5, pinning the knight is one option. You see him calculating. That's actually, even though it, it seems small, that's actually a very important tip, and I actually made a mistake doing that in a recent stream of my own. For those just watching, Fabiano was going to move the pawn, but rather than try to move it back or even risk any kind of mouse slip, he pulled the pawn to an illegal square and let go. Ah. Which, when you're playing online, is a very important trick. And in fact, if you watch guys like Eric Hansen, mm -hmm. guys like Hikaru Nakamura, guys that are really good at bullet, mm -hmm. whenever they're calculating lines, you'll see this motion a lot, where they hmm. go up and they drag away. Hmm. And I know it sounds, okay, Danny, stick to teaching chess and not <laughs> teaching tricks, but this is a very important trick in terms of bullet. I mean, just ask guys like Hansen, bullet players who, you know, you want to avoid mouse slips. And the other day, I actually did that where I was threatening to move, I wanted to move my rook to a square, and I decided huh? not to, and I moved it back thinking I was putting it on the right square and accidentally let go too early, and the rook ended up there. Ooh. <laughs> and I ended up losing the game. And so it's actually a, um, 
Sorry about that. It's actually a really important trick. If you're going to move forward and you don't want the move, hmm. bring it to an illegal square and let go. Mm -hmm. Pro tip. You're welcome, crowd. You're welcome. There you go. Um, F4 is on the board yeah, and the crowd go. is appreciating you your advice. That's right. The uh, move F4 and, and seeing Fabiano do that was... Uh, was uh, a good reminder of what some of the uh, just people that play a lot of online chess just know how to not go wrong and that's one way you do it. Tori is saying in the chat that people should learn to use the right click. Shout out to Golda Story who is also here with us on site at the Fosom Foundry. Yeah, the issue with the right click to break the move though, Tori, is that sometimes the right click will highlight and so we've seen times where you try to do that and it actually still makes them move. So again, I recommend the illegal drag away. But All yes, right. but yes you can use the right click mm -hmm. as well. It, the the um, main point is that the position here is is uh, getting tougher and tougher. Christian just, is asking if, if they can draw arrows as of players. Of course we can. F as players. Oh, no, no, they cannot as players, no. You cannot draw arrows on your own board as a player. Uh, you can, Christian, because your account is given certain access. Oh. That's right. Mm. We give that access to our streamers for when they stream and they can draw instructive ideas, but normal accounts on chess.com cannot, cannot do that of their own games. Anybody can do it to games they're observing. I love the conversation in the chat right now. I'm not going to read it out, but um, I'm missing out on that. Yep. All right, F4 threatens F3. I mean, this is just getting super crazy. I think that Zavin is really under pressure, unfortunately. I'm sure Artak is on the edge of his seat, but it's just not looking good right now. Uh, Sean Sargisian ultimately did clarify things, but unfortunately didn't get enough winning chances in the process. Um, probably best case scenario, this is a, uh, this is a draw. Which, which is bad news for the Eagles. Bad news for the Eagles is they, they needed wins on the other boards anyway. They're probably not going to get all the wins they needed because they're, they're facing Fabio and Caruana on mm. board one. But, um, but even if Fabi doesn't win right now, it looks like the rest of the bishops are holding their own. So, wow, this has been quite the performance. They are moments away from clinching it, securing their opportunity to try to regrain, regain that crown in the chess capital of the world in St. Louis there. They, they want that title back. They are the only team that has made it to the top four every single year of That's the Pro right. Chess League. That's they have right. been there constantly. Won the first edition in 2017. Last year they were unfortunate to lose to the Eagles. Right, in the semifinals here. And here they are repeating the same semifinals, taking their revenge on the Armenian team. Yep. Shant is, uh, you know, not in a bad situation. That's where chess from a team sport can be tough, right? Because even if you feel like you did the best on the X's and O's that you could, chess is a very black and white game and you, you have to be objective. But if Shant draws this game as black against a very strong international master, unfortunately, because of the team situation, it's just not good enough. And so um, I actually really like this move, Rookie 7, by Nicholas, because... Leaves the bishop pinned, says, I'm going to go poke over here at g7. And this is just getting tougher and tougher for the Eagles. Now shant almost down a minute. He shant lose on time, <laughs> but he might be about and to. And he shant lose the game either. They need this one point somehow for the Eagles. Shout out to JP, who's still surviving over here. Shout against. out to everyone who has been here the whole day. Yeah, shout out to everyone. On site, online, we so appreciate your support and that you tune into the Pro Chess League semifinals. Danny, you were supposed to pick up the line from there. You know? Oh, sorry. Hype, I was hype, just, hype, I, I hype, was zoning hype. out. I was zoning out looking at, I was, a I was looking for the mate. I couldn't find the mate. I'm looking here like Prolenko's got me dazed and confused here. Surviving king with the king on, on H4. H4. Look at this game with Fabiano right now. I mean, this has just been an all-out assault. Mm -hmm. Absolute monster chess right now. We'll go back to Julian Prolenko because somehow he is surviving, about to be in a time scramble against Anna. This move d4 is fine, but still, he can take it, and on queen d4, he can play g4. Queen e7, the king now actually has a new shield of pawns. Yeah, it's not so over. I'm, again, I'm sh yeah, and he does it. I, I just don't see the win for Anna, and I'm, I'm shocked. She has to win. There's just no way that if she does not win, that, that's just match over. This is the board where they were supposed to win, no matter what. Yeah, I, Rook e6. I like uh, that move. Chasing uh, the queen yeah, away from the Yeah, get the queens file. off the board. Or, or, no, or, or, or. she can't trade queens. 
You got queen of five coming? Oh, then maybe I don't like rook e6 anymore. Yeah, I mean, I think that even even Julian is, is holding his own here, so this just right now is feeling like the bishop's match of destiny. Um, the oh, Dallas and Julian's destiny. smiling. He's, He's smiling. smiling. He's feeling, feeling like, hey, like I'm smiling because I didn't get checkmated oh, here. Oh, g5 check. Yeah, well, Wait, did he get G3. checkmated? He did get checkmated. Almost. And he's smiling about it. Well, at least he's got the sense well, if, of humor. If king h5, there's queen d3, Ooh, but you have queen f5. Queen f5 still. So, where's the mate? I mean, oh, queen back to g7. Oh, and even if check, you check with mate. Whoa! And pawn mate. F takes g6 pawn mate. Yeah. It's over. Nasty. Queen g7. Unfortunately for Julian... As he laughs, he gets his king checkmated on the board. Beautiful mate on the you know, board. Anna Sergeyan winning a crucial point for the Armenian Eagles. And uh, it keeps it keeps the dream alive. If you are if you are the Armenia Eagles, it is not over yet. They are back within striking distance. Julian wandered his queen too far in one game, his king too far in another. And I uh, hope he brought snacks for all the journeys that he took here off the board because oh. didn't always end well. All right. This is um, this is Caruana's game to just show us show us how you how you convert. Once again, uh, adventurous king. This king walked all the way to b3 from e1. Yeah, I mean, give the give the Eagles credit. It's not over yet, right? I mean, this is a position that you feel white is just hanging by a thread, but. But until there's uh, there's a win on the board, it, it's a very dynamic position, right? Mm -hmm. White has the G file, the D6 pawn is under fire, and okay, Fabi has to find the accurate approach to put it away and send the bishops to the championship, but it's not over yet. It's not over, and Andresian is known for his fighting spread, even though in this position he can have all the fighting spread in the world. If the position is lost, Fabiano will convert it. Knight takes d6, like we said. I mean, at this point, when you're in a situation like that, you just got to play quickly and just take things and close your eyes and mm -hmm. pray, right? And just yes. hope that there's no mate. True. At least you should be material up so that in case you survive the mate, you have chances. C4 check. Queen is coming to b2. That's kind of the key idea is if you bring the king up, the king gets chased all the way up the board, and you just... Uh, Okay, I still don't see a mate, but you assume that that's not something you can survive. Zavin shakes his head. He, he assumes it too. And the key point, I think, if you take on c4 is, okay, for one, I think you can take and then play queen b2 anyway, and the king is trapped. I think that's the idea. Mm -hmm. And actually, it must be it, because you can't stop both I mates. I don't see a defense. Um, so maybe that's the idea. He obviously doesn't really have a choice. He's got to either, either take on c4 or, or run with the king some more. I saw somebody in Twitch chat say that Zavin's king is training for a marathon. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Kind of feels like that, yes. Yep. If he can't take on c4, then it's... Oh, jeez. King a3. And uh, can't b because of rook takes a7, king b4, then queen okay, b2. He goes for it. So queen b2 check. I mean... King c5 is he trying the, where's to escape? The rook c7, king b6, rook c6, king b7... Bishop a6, king a8, rook c8, knight c8, queen b7, queen b7 mate. mate. I went full Hikaru. You did it. I just blacked out You did went full Hikaru. <laughs> you did it, Danny. You did it. I'm so proud of you. Oh, my gosh. I just blacked out. That, but that's what it feels like to be Hikaru. <laughs> that's right what there. it feels like. For two seconds, you felt like Bishop Hikaru. Bishop a4, king a Honestly, it doesn't matter because the line I gave was wrong. LOL. It's um, all right. You almost did it. Wait. That's a rook. That's a rook, so you rook better, a seven, you better The queen comes in. It's provide. over. <laughs> it's over. Oh, wow. And Fabiano Caruana, this is it. Jokes aside, this is moments away. We are moments away from what will be bishop d7. The queen will come into b8. The queen will come to f8. Mate will be on the board. And the St. Louis archbishops will be headed back to the Pro Chess League Championship. It's Mate's next move with queen f8. And that's it. Fabiano Caruana. It's over. He shows up. He wins all four games, and he sends the Bishops back to the Pro Chess League Championship. That's why you bring 2,800s to the Pro Chess League Finals, I guess. Indeed. Mike Kummer, the team captain, the, the knew Fabi, it. The Fabi hype is real in the Twitch chat. Use your emotes. Get your Fabi emotes your, and St. Louis Archbishop's emotes. 
and there it is. Whoa, and the crowd goes wild. There's still one more game going. Unfortunately, it doesn't matter that Sargisian is the only one who can win because his team unable to come up with the, um, the victory here today. They will be competing against the Shangdu Panas, and it's really funny. We have St. Louis moving on to face a team that's never been to the championship, and then we have a rematch of last year's championship yeah. between the Armenia Eagles and the Shangdu Pandas, But right? this time not for the gold medal. This time for the, sil for the bronze medal. For the bronze. But still, um, we will have a rematch of, uh, of last year's championship, but this time competing and for the bronze. that was the last game of the match, Sean Sargisian versus Nicolas Theodoru. And the, it's uh, over. And the St. Louis Archbishops move in to the finals by a final score of 9-7, to seven, and... Uh, they will be taking on the, the bottom bottom snowballs for the gold, for the championship. That, that was a very disappointed Sean Sargisian. Obviously, the Eagles yep. came here to defend their title. They said that there's a lot of pressure on them as reigning champions. Last year, they were here, and well, nobody expected them to win. Right. This year, that was This year, the Cinderella story was yes. over. It was more like every, they had a target on their back. Yes. Right, And everybody knew that they would have to beat the Eagles if they wanted to get there. The St. Louis Archbishops do so. They'll be playing the bottom, bottom snowballs in the championship. We've got more interviews from on site. We're going to get some reactions from our uh, from the players, from the managers. So don't go anywhere. We're going to take a very quick break and be right back live here from the Pro Chess League Finals. It is now officially the bottom, bottom snowballs versus the St. Louis Archbishops in the championship. We'll be right back. I'm here with the St. Louis Archbishops who just beat the Armenian Eagles to make it to the finals tomorrow. Mike, how surprised were you with the final score? Oh, n not very surprised at all. You know, we uh, got a second chance. You don't get many second chances in life and you take advantage of them. And uh, I definitely brought the right crew to help me out. This was awesome. St. Louis Archbishops won the first ever Pro Chess League. Can you tell us a little bit about who was on the team back then? Sure. So we had the uh, 2017 uh, MVP, Wesley So, everybody's favorite uh, comedian grandmaster, uh, Benjamin Feingold, uh, the, the pro uh, Varkobian, and uh, Linda Wood student, Nicholas Rosenthal. And in what ways is your team similar or different this year to when you won the Pro Chess League? Well, we definitely have a superstar on uh, board one to really help us out, huh? Won every game, uh, Fabiano Carriorano, so uh, he was kind of like Wesley So. He was, a, he was a monster that year, too, and uh, pretty much, uh, you know, it's pretty, pretty similar and uh, good stuff. What are you guys going to do to prepare for tomorrow? Party! <laughs> Do you guys agree with this? Yeah, definitely. We're uh, going to celebrate and then prepare for tomorrow's match. Of course. We're going to party. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, what was the closest point during the match at which you thought it might be closer than this clean win? Uh, definitely. I mean, we got off to a little slow start, two and a half, one and a half, but uh, we persevered and... Uh, you know, tied it up 4-4, four, four, and then, you know, we were the favorites in the five of the last eight matches, so we really liked our chances going into halftime. Thank you. I will let Anna and Danny take it with the interview with Fabiano in the booth. Well, there you see your manager pretty excited, right? And uh, he's got to be excited. He, he brought you here to kind of right the wrong in his mind of last year when the Archbishops fell in exactly the same round to the exact same team, the Armenian Eagles. But you, you had it going today. You were playing enterprising chess right from the start. The exchange sacrifice against yeah. Anna Sargisian. You dealt with a two-piece sacrifice from Sean Sargisian. Yeah. But how, how are you feeling down there? Are you feeling good? You've got the music going. You seemed in a, in a rhythm there. I was, I was having fun, yeah. Um, the second game was really tough. Because at first I didn't take his sack seriously. I thought... I saw king e3, and I didn't really see a, like, bishop g4, queen e2. Can we I'd bring it up on yeah, the yeah. board? We'll yeah, we'll bring it up. Yeah, let's do that. I didn't see a way for him to continue there, and... Uh, yeah. But it was surprisingly difficult, and I don't even know objectively what what was going on. Um, I'm bringing it up right now. Sure. So we can show it for everybody. Oh, as, as long as I can just... <laughs> type for I'm, just, journey I'm, typing, correctly. I'm typing too fast. <laughs> what am I doing? Oh. I know how to spell your name. I just, uh, you know, 
was uh, was getting lost here. So here we go. Yeah. So the sacrifice that started with the move knight takes f2 and uh, yeah, yeah. No, this this is the thing. Like I was. Yeah, I, I thought that knight g3 would be kind of winning, d4, okay. knight e4, but then queen e5, and I couldn't find a way to break these pins. Mm. Okay. It's really b4, bishop b6, and then, yeah, my <laughs> Right. And my you just, you just really can't thin. get out. I yeah. can't get out. I have to sack a piece, wow. but then he'll have a lot of compensation. Okay, so what did you calculate here, then? Uh, obviously, you didn't go with knight g3. You played yeah, b4 right yeah, away. Yeah, b4, I think, uh, looks correct, at least. I mean, I, I force him to play bishop d6, so at least I'm out of the pin. Okay. But it... Yeah, this he found this strong move c5, which I had. Um, I was looking at bishop e5 and knight e3. I thought I'm winning, and c5 came, and suddenly, right. yeah, this should be winning. But okay. I, after c5, I had no idea what's going on. Um, I just want to point out one nice moment at the end. Yeah. It wasn't. Go ahead. This wasn't my idea. Uh, it was at the very end. Okay. So we're all the way to the end where you had the. Uh, we were we were calling for making sure you don't make a uh, a blunder made on queen d4, h g4. Uh, not not to play something like bishop b2 and mate yourself, but he played e3 check anyway. So yeah, it didn't that was matter. that was maybe helpful to me. Yeah. Maybe he missed bishop f4, which is uh, surprisingly holding everything together. Right. All of a sudden, there's no tactics anywhere. Yeah. So yeah, here I already felt I should be winning. Okay. Um, and then after bishop b4, so I, I can't really take credit for this idea. Like uh, all the guys were watching the game, and and Tata pointed out that rook h8, king h8, bishop f7. Oh wow. Wow. And, and there's, there's no way to stop the mate on the h file. Well, That's you have to play beautiful. rook d two, rook d three, and rook h three, which is a sad way of. Yeah, the king has a nice spot, and or well, you could take the bishop. Right. right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, not yeah. to repeat moves in case rook d two. Yeah, right. uh, or bishop. Yeah, yeah whatever. Okay. Great. But it's such a beautiful yeah. motive. Uh, I mean. Well, the one you went for was also was yeah. also pretty nice, right? Because it ended with a uh, a nice a nice battery or yeah. battery discovery, whatever you want to call it. It's winning, but less winning because yeah. he, he could have played like rook e3, rook b7, rook b3, and uh, mm. play this exchange down. Right. Okay, it's yeah. completely yeah. hopeless, but anyway, it would have been such a nice finish. Um, mm. Okay. And, well, yeah. Well, we're on the chess here. Before we get back to some other questions, there was also a debate going on in your game as to whether or not this opening you played here was preparation. Now, how <laughs> much of it was prep? Just tell me. Just no one no one else is watching. But are, you, are you kidding? Yeah, when did it when this, did this, it this was this was not not prep, prep at all? No. Okay, Christian was right. <laughs> all right. So you were playing chat. so fast and so calm. I was like, okay, he's he's cooked this up at home. Fabiano's bringing the big guns, but this was just not prep. No, I, I mean it's a known line. Like Mama okay. Mama Dior has played it a lot of games. Okay. And recently Paco played it against Fiedler in the Grand K tournament. But okay. I, I mean, I I don't know anything about it. Um, and so you just felt, you know, that uh, this was the right approach to be aggressive here in the last round is black. And okay, I think my position might have been suspicious at some point, but uh, but where it was, do you it's find always, it suspicious? At which which point? I mean, somewhere around here. I just I didn't feel like I had a very good position, but okay, it, it remains very complicated. So. Yeah. H4, Queen B3, Rook B8. Yeah, maybe not Knight D5. Maybe a move like Bishop D2, something. I mean, asking me what I want to do next because my right. next move is not. Maybe I'll just castle though. And so I fell victim to the to the to the Fabi Fabi itis, where I'm watching a game and I just assume it's like brilliant prep and like you've got this all worked out because it's Fabiano. And you're saying you already, you didn't even really feel that confident about your position. No, this was not prep. I it's mean, a common <laughs> affliction when people are watching your games; they get Fabi itis. Have you ever heard of this? No, I haven't. Okay, well now you know. So sometimes when we're watching your games, we're like, okay, it's Fabiano. He's already prepped this. Like this is just over. Yeah, that's, so. that's usually not the case. <laughs> okay, well, good to know. Um, good to know. It's just that it's a 15-minute game, so I kind of have right. to play fast. Right? I can't. I can't take my time at the start of the game. Right. Yeah. Well, let's talk about that. So this is this. You, you played as much 15-minute chess this year as I think probably any of the world's elite. You played in 57 games in the Pro Chess League, right? And you were consistently, you know, three and a half, three points, four and zero, oh, right? And do you just feel at home? Do you like this time control? Are you really enjoying this format where it seems that a lot of your a lot of your games are just very aggressive and and it feels natural watching you uh, you know play at this time control? Yeah, no, I, I like playing rapid. Uh, yeah. So my problem is that in internet blitz in general, like once it gets down to the last few seconds, I'm not that great. Right. Um, Join I, the club, but. Yeah. <laughs> so. I, I mean, some players are naturally very good at this, like Hikaru is yeah. a clear example, Maxim is another example. Um, I'm, I'm not very confident when it gets down to like five seconds. Uh, but with 15 minutes, there's usually a, a healthy cushion, and I can, if I play quickly at the start, I can avoid heavy time trouble. And like in this, these four games, I avoided pretty much any time yeah. trouble. 
Looking at the results of your team, because you have been paying close attention to the other boards as well, when did you feel it was the turning point in favor of the archbishops? I thought the second mat, uh, the second round was very important because the first round it was very close to to being a bad situation for us. Like Benjamin was a at, uh, at some point in a very bad position. Yeah. It could have been three one, and this, mm. that's difficult to come back from. Um, but the second match, uh, I mean, my game against Shant was uh, really close, and it was really important to win this. Yeah. I, I think that was the turning point. Mm. And uh, uh, okay, I, I mean, things just went smoothly from there. Like when Benjamin won against Zavin in the third uh, round, that was also a huge win. Hmm. We, and, uh, we talked about that in the storyline in the beginning. The worry was that it would go according to plan, meaning Fabiano would win all his games, but they would lose anyway, right? And I was talking about how much that was needed, and so I won't even ask you who the MVP was. I think you were the MVP of the match, but if you were to give the other MVP, would you say that Benjamin really coming here, not having the same experience you do in the time control, getting that big win against really last year's hero last yeah. year's MVP Zavin right there was really maybe the biggest game in the match yeah that I mean uh, Benjamin really came through today and yeah. uh, saving that difficult position uh, winning against Zavin I mean these were crucial moments uh, but uh, I mean everyone I, I think played their part today so let's look ahead a little bit obviously um, you guys came here later in the day the match between Shangdu and Baden Bono was well underway but then it goes to overtime right and you're on the edge of your seat like what what was it like for you to watch that format where the players are being eliminated one by one how did how did you like that that was fun to watch um, I mean it also came down to the wire you know the the last match uh, Georg's position was I thought his queen on b3 was very suspicious. was strangely played right. but then, then he played this move bishop d5 I had missed it I think most players had missed it uh, looking at the game and and he found this really incredibly strong resource, and then Black's position is suddenly very difficult. Right. Uh, it, it was a. It looked like Black was doing well after b5, and then suddenly Bishop d5 comes, and and he's struggling. Um, so that was an impressive win for him. Yeah. Well, uh, what do you think the archbishops need to do tomorrow? Obviously, you're going against a three GM lineup um, with uh, Kolars and Meyer, of mm -hmm. course, and Donchenko, who played very well today. And what are your thoughts about facing those three guys? Um, I mean, I have some experience against them. Um, okay, Georg I've played many times before, mostly in classical chess, but uh, I think we know our chess styles. I mean, right. we're, we're quite acquainted, acquainted with, uh, with how we play. Um, I played Kolars in two games recently in Blitz in, in Berlin. Um, and Donchenko I, I haven't played, maybe an in internet Blitz, but, uh, right. but not over the board. And uh, so I'm not too familiar familiar with his play um, but but still uh, like uh, today I, I, I hadn't played uh, these players before except for uh, Zavin like right. for, for me the, it was sort of new territory playing against them okay my final question would be about the overall atmosphere you have played now four games here in an esports environment yeah. how does it compare to your classical chess tournament experience and how do you like it it's fun I mean it's also nice that after I finish a game I can watch the games and, and talk to my friends about them um, you didn't have a beer while you were playing, though. No, <laughs> not no. yet. That's well, correct. not yet. Okay. <laughs> maybe tonight. Um, right. But yeah, it's it's a fun atmosphere, uh, and it's nice that players can talk during the games, and that's usually you have to uh, watch in complete silence, and here uh, you can talk, discuss the games, and the players can't hear it, so it's nice. Do you see that this format has a future? Chess is an esport, and would you no. compete in more events like this? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I've shown my. Uh, that I enjoy playing the Pro Chess League and that I, I, mean, I support the idea. I played, uh, this is my third one, and I've, I've enjoyed all of them. So uh, I hope that there will be more events in the future. Well, That's it's been great, great having you, and obviously we wish you and the team best of luck tomorrow. Thank I you. think that uh, should be should be one for the ages, and uh, if you keep playing like this, it seems like it's going to be hard to slow you down. I said earlier, you know, maybe they can't stop you, maybe they can contain you, but at this point... Uh, just congratulations. You Thanks. led the bishops where they wanted to be. I'm sure that Mike is waiting to give you a really long and awkward <laughs> hug downstairs. So just like guard yourself a little bit, right? right. Uh, but seriously, congrats, man. Thanks. And um, Congratulations one more time to you Thank and you. to the team, of course. Well, for uh, everybody here, uh, we're going to we're, we're going we're gonna to say goodbye to Fabiano, and then we'll be right back. Um, and... Uh, don't go anywhere. Anne and I with our closing, closing comments and uh, let you know what's in store tomorrow when we return. I'm gonna, I'm, we are still on air. We're we still on air right now. We just let Fabiano get that awkward yeah. hug. Okay, that we'll let Fabi go down and get his awkward <laughs> hug from Mike. Um, thank you for being here, man. And uh, there
there you have it on screen, everybody. You've got the results of the day in place. The Snowballs move on in 8-8 tiebreak fashion. They ultimately win that final blitz game that you heard Fabiano mentioning by Jorg Meyer over Lee Chow. Uh, the St. Louis Archbishops get it done over the reigning champions. They dethrone the Eagles by a final score of 9-7, led by the man who was just with us, world number two, Fabiano Caruana, who, um, you know, we talked to him about it. He said he really likes this time control, and, and I, you know, I know that there's a lot of talk about that because Fabiano played Magnus Carlsen, lost in the Rapid at the World Championship. Well, a lot of people would lose to Magnus Carlsen in the Rapid, but I, I am genuinely just very yeah. impressed by how how confident he seems in mm -hmm. this time control, the flow of it. It's a little faster than the official FIDE Rapid. I feel like there's something about this that is bringing out some of the best chess in Fabiano. A very creative, original, and aggressive chess that yeah. we don't get to see that often at yeah. other elite tournaments. So yep. we, we are very happy to see this inspiring chess by Fabiano. And congratulations one more time to the Archbishops for making it to the finals. Tomorrow first you will see at 10 a.m., the match for the third place that's between the Shangdu Pandas and the Armenia Eagles. The Armenia Eagles were ready to face the Pandas, but in the finals, right. uh, they, unfortunately they, for them. They thought they would face the Pandas. Yes. I don't think either team wanted it to be for the yeah. consolation match, but I'm sure they'll bring it, and uh, it'll be a blast. You will have the call on that one with, with Grandmaster, Grandmaster Robert, Robert Hess. Hess. I will be downstairs hanging out. Um, with, uh, with the rest of everybody here at the PCL Finals enjoying the festivities and then look for me and Robert to be back with the championship between the Snowballs and the Archbishop. So for everybody here uh, at uh, Chess.com, live here at the event, the Pro Chess League Finals, for everyone in chat, we love you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting and watching the show all day, both at Chess.com TV and Twitch TV slash chess. We will see you tomorrow at 10 a.m. Don't be late. Don't be late. Don't and be late. We start earlier than 10 a.m., I think. We start earlier than 10 a.m., so be like 9.30 Right? Breakfast of That's Champions. Early. That's early. Breakfast of Champions, <laughs> right? Well, again, thank you everybody for being here. Good night, enjoy, and we will see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow at 10 a.m.